isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. My name is Rafael Diaz, and I have been passionate about chess since I was 14 years old. Chess taught me a lot of things when I was a teenager, like how to think strategically and how to make decisions based on logical reasoning. It also taught me to find the determination to pursue my goals, which later on helped me to obtain a PhD in physics. Chess has helped me so much that I always wanted to find a way to make more people interested and attracted to this wonderful game. My other passion, video games, led me to create my own game studio minimal games. We are now a team of eight people and we have been working for the past two years in our most ambitious project to date, Chessarama. Chessarama is a collection of chess inspired games, each with a different set of rules and themes like medieval fantasy, farming, samurai and even soccer. Our objective is to give players a modern gameplay experience using inspirations from chess tactics, strategies and culture to create original puzzle and turn-based games all in one package. The reason why I'm here today is to announce our partnership with Play Magnus Group founded by the five times world chess champion Magnus Carlsen and creator of the Champions Chess Tour, the world's most innovative sport event to emerge in the last few years. As part of this partnership, Chessarama will become an official sponsor of the Champions Chess Tour for the remainder of 2022 and for the whole season of 2023. We will also be an official partner of the next FIDE World Championships broadcast on Chess24 channels. It is a big honor to have Play Magnus Group supporting Chessarama's mission of bringing even more people to the magical world of chess. I invite you to join us in this adventure by adding Chessarama on your Steam wishlist and by following along both the game and Play Magnus on social media. Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Pragyananda. Do you want to use my games to improve your chess? Now you can do. We have handpicked 50 puzzles from my games played in Champions Chess Tour this season. I went Bishop C5, D4 and Queen 4 Yeah, another crucial win for the qualifications to topic. You can download it for free just by going to chess24.com slash puzzle pack. Enjoy solving. Hello everybody, I am Grandmaster David Anton Guijarro. I'm Magnus Carlsen. My name is Anish Giri. I am a top Grandmaster. I'm Grandmaster Nils Grandelius from Sweden. I am Grandmaster Hare Krishna Pendala from India. Hi there, it's me, John Chess, inventor of chess. And are you sick of sucking at chess? Well, lucky for you, I have also invented aim chess. Look at this chess puzzle. Did you solve it? Of course not, that's because you're not using Aim Chess. Aim Chess is a digital chess trainer that helps you improve by creating unique lessons based on your recent games. Just link your chess.com or VChess account and feel that brain wrinkle. Yeah, see, you shouldn't have blundered your queen just there. <gasps> 
Now I know! Thanks, Aim Chess! Now all that's left to figure out is how that funny horse moves. They even got acquired by that one chess player other than Hikaru, so you know it's good! Hi, it's me. That guy I just mentioned, and I am the best chess man in the world. But thanks to Aim Chess, I also have a girlfriend now as well. This could be you! Personalized training, game reports and analysis disease, study plans, sick, luscious hair, intuition builder, all this and more available on Aim Chess. Hello? Courtney, did you know that Aim Chess users improve their ratings 43% faster than average? So what are you waiting for? Join Aim Chess today. Links will be somewhere, probably. I don't know, I just made the video. Aim Chess, sign up now and get 50k silver and two free months off your VPN. Now that's what I call a queen's gambit. <laughs> that's so fucking dumb. Aim Chess, for when you aim to chess. That's their slogan, it's what they say. Ready, aim, chess. That's another, it's... Look, it, just sign up for Aim Chess, okay? Just... Come on, literally, why not? Alright, just stop being a dick for like five seconds and just go. Alright? Jesus Christ. Welcome, everybody. My name is Yanni Bomnishi, former World Chess Champion. Are starting a new course here for Chessable? A very special chessable course. Master your chess with Judith Bolger. You know what? I learned a lot. This is John. John loves to study chess. This is David. David loves to study chess as well, but efficiently. John spends more time setting up the board and figuring out what's on the page of his book than he gets to study. David likes to take it easy and use his time wisely. David has finished his exercise for today. John should try the same. Hello everyone, welcome 
to the third day of the Matt Waters Champion Chess Tours final from San Francisco. We have seen uh, incredible fights in the first two days. And, uh, well, we have some incredible pairings for today. But before getting into it, let me introduce my co-commentator, very good friend. If I start to tell you what he has achieved in chess, I think we will miss the show. So it's Rustam Kasimjanov. Welcome, Rustam. Hi, Peter. Thank you. Uh, hi, guys. Uh, yeah, great to be here. It's such, it was such an exciting day yesterday. Also, the day before yesterday, we had so much drama. But those, okay, the match of Giri yesterday, how did he come back from 0-2 is still beyond me. Yeah, it's just... Exactly. I mean, coming back, he has won finally both of his matches in uh, Blitz playoff mm -hmm. and he has four points. I mean, Magnus Carlsen and Jan Shishtov Duda are leading the tournament with six points each. They both have won uh, their first two matches. Yeah, there you see the standings. Anish Giri right behind with four points and and uh, I think every and also Liam Levitt four points, of course, after winning yesterday against Wesley So, beating Wesley two and a half half. That was also some shocking result. And uh, let's talk about today matchups. For example, Magnus Carlsen against Shakti Mamedyalov. Uh, let's let's just call our matches first. Wesley So against Arjun Arigaishi, Jan Shishtov Duda Anish Giri, and Pragnananda versus. Liam Le, what is your take? Which match are you most excited about, Ustam? Yeah, I, I really don't know what to expect uh, of Pragnananda after yesterday. I just don't know, yeah? Because I, I think a lot of people would find it hard to perform well the day before losing, the day after losing a match like this, right? So yeah. I just don't know what to expect of that. Of course, Duda Giri is going to be interesting because they also have a clash of styles. Uh, a superbly sharp Duda against very strategic, very positional Giri. Although we saw yesterday, yeah, Anish is also capable of playing different kind of chess. Yes, but at the same time, when he bonds back, yeah, in the very last game, in the fourth game, then we saw the vintage uh, Anish, yeah, when he got this playable endgame with the knight and and Luke versus Luke Bishop, and then mm -hmm. he did uh, miracles there. Uh, clearly, very solid, and if he is kind of satisfied with his position, he feels that he's comfortable and stable enough, then he's super strong. What about Magnus Carlsen against Shakhtar Mamadjalo? What is your take on this? Yeah, normally Magnus should be should be a serious favorite, right, in this match. I, I don't know. I don't have the statistics. Um, has Shakhtar ever beaten Magnus in this format? Well, good, good question. Maybe Chet can help us or Tadeas can help us out. I mean, I do recall that Shakti played incredible amount of uh, phenomenal games throughout the tour, and he has crushed almost everyone. But did he really beat Magnus? I'm also not 100% sure about it. It's also kind of a clash of styles. Well, what, what is your take on this? Yeah, that Shakti is very energetic, very aggressive. Usually, whenever someone faces Magnus, people tell tell that you should be aggressive, you should attack Magnus, where Shakriya tries to do that. What's your take on this uh, stylistic matter? Well, I have a feeling that, that Shakriya, he does, he does a lot with, with energy and with optimism and with speed. And uh, of course, especially against Magnus, uh, it is very difficult to keep up uh, as far as the speed is concerned. Uh, for instance, we also... Um, uh, before, okay, this is a different uh, matter altogether, but for instance, when Nepo played um, against Magnus in a World Championship match, it was obvious that he couldn't keep the speed which, with which he usually plays, right? Magnus has this effect on people. They slow down because they don't want to look like an idiot, right? And and um, and it's, it's, it's a thing, yeah? If, if Shahriar is capable of keeping his speed, then he'll be very dangerous. But if not, then who knows? Yeah, and who else, if not Tadeas, is helping us out that actually Shah beat Magnus in the first round of the previous event in the AIMCHESS Rapid in October. So mm -hmm. that's a fresh memory. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we have already seen Magnus in preliminaries. He's experimenting. He, he's trying to win as ma many games as possible. And he also loses quite some there. But in a match format, uh, we, we know exactly that he's uh, very determined, very concentrated, very focused, and he always comes with a match strategy. 
That's what I feel. And now, so we see that Magnus is playing from the white side. I'm expecting some some kind of a targeted prep, not necessarily objectively, but psychologically aiming to disbalance Shakri as quickly as possible. Apparently, Shakri has beaten him in uh, in Oslo. Uh -huh. Wow! So basically, Shakri just uh, has quite a good record against Magnus uh, this year because I mm -hmm. remember that. The question was absolutely justified. I believe that Shakriya had horrible score against Magnus for a very long time. Yes. Although he was one of those uh, people uh, who still have beaten him in a regular classical game. Yeah, in Beale. I think in Beale, yeah. yes. In, in something like 2018, exactly at the moment when Magnus was not losing a single game. Yeah, I think this was that was the game that uh, sort of finished his non-losing streak. And also started a new non-losing streak. Yeah, there was this one game in between, yeah, that he lost against Shaf. Yeah, probably Magnus got very upset. And we also have one more very special match. Uh, it's at the moment at the the the, the match at the bottom. Wesley So versus Arjun Arigaishi. But I mean, we know that both players are super strong. They had been suffering so far in the tournament, but this is the moment to start winning. And then if you get back the confidence, then then who knows where where the journey will lead. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, uh, of course, I'm uh, a bit interested in the result because Arjun is uh, is one of my pupils. Uh, but mainly, I would like him to, to improve his game because I think that the first two days he played, well, I mean, it was not his level. Yeah, He, he looked a bit off shape. We need him to play better. Well, my experience, and we are seeing that the players are getting ready, everyone is very tense, that in the major events, there is one big catch, yeah, that there are seven days, but every single day features a mini-match, and those players who actually start out badly, they tend to suffer throughout the event, and this mm -hmm. is the big question for me, that will, for example, Wesley be able to turn the tables, yeah, because, okay, from Wesley, we are expecting a uh, real uh the result basically in this event yeah we, we saw like he gets the wild card he comes fresh from winning the global champions uh global championship and uh who knows he might be even dethroning in this tournament magnus but so far he has been suffering and we already have live action in duda against anish giri uh, ragozin with cd5 ed5 bishop g5 h6 the modern one Castles e3, bishop f5. All right. This is, so this is your favorite system, right? It was bishop f5. Yes, it's it's the favorite system because actually I'm the co-inventor of the system as well. Uh, the reason why I'm saying a co co uh, co guy because I worked it out with Alexander Morozevich. Yeah, and and mm -hmm. the credit should go to both of us because it was 2016, one month prior to the Olympiad in uh, Baku. When I actually thought like I'm gonna play in the first board for for Hungary, and mm -hmm. then at the end after some incredible things, I ended up not playing the Olympiad. But I actually prepared this whole setup with Alexander, and and then I was able to use it against Dingley. Then anyway, one month later, and it worked to perfection, and actually it became like the main line of uh, this whole opening. Yeah, this is what we discovered about Ragozin, right? Turned out there are really many ways for Black to play that opening. Uh, it turned out to be a very flexible opening with a lot of possibilities. Yeah, for example, this one is uh, completely new. I mean, Bishop H4 castles easily Bishop F5. Bishop E2 move, what there is already uh, interesting. Yeah, Bishop E2, Knight B7. And after Queen B3, this move, Queen E7. It's not the most natural move in the position usually people play c5 here or... no i'm confused or do they i think they just take on c3 they take on c3, c3 exactly yeah. and if b takes c3 then you you play c5 mm -hmm. this was my game against uh of course yeah this is my game against dingley then this is the classical approach and against queen takes c3 then they have all kinds of different g5s and then knight e4s mm -hmm. and 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 whatever yeah it's a very complicated position but uh, here we see the new twist, yet the theory always keeps on developing, and Danish plays the move 27, which I believe was introduced by 
Alexander Grischuk against Benjamin Bok in the World Cup 2019. So it's already <clears throat> also known for quite some time. So white castles, black plays c6, yeah, keeps the bishop, protects the pawn. And only after h3, he will make up his mind. Does, uh, does black have alternatives? Like, can you actually move the bishop? Because I think b7 is hanging, right? Or maybe there were some possibilities. Yeah, no, probably not. Yeah, just takes takes, and I believe b5. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is this is the traditional way. Yeah, b5, a4, and then I think something like a6. Wow, Duda keeps blitzing, and this is very good news because it means that he has studied this position, and I'm very interested to see how things are developing now. In um... it looks like a pawn blunder. Yeah, bishop c2. Well, if you. Blitz all these things out. I'm expecting that you are happy with this. Of course, we have to highlight, yeah, queen c2, queen takes a3 would be the, the trick. What do we have? I can go queen b2, bishop takes a4, and... Uh, um, and what did we get, yeah? I mean, maybe, maybe he's planning to sacrifice like a positional exchange side, but I don't quite believe this here. Interesting. Or maybe he will go queen a2, bishop a4, and bishop d1. Try to get to the a6 pawn like this. But I mean, it's also very strange. I mean, yeah, it, let's take a look at the count and look at Anish. Anish senses the moment that what is this? Did my opponent blunder bishop c2, or is this some very deep prep? Yeah, it's uh, always I mean, confusing. Maybe I can play queen b4 also. Yeah, yeah that, that was my kind of bailout. Yeah, that maybe we can do this. Takes, takes. Yeah, bishop a4, rook c1, and the rook c8, rook c3, yeah, or something like this. Exactly, yeah. This Maybe looks... I can win this pawn and this bishop on a4, who knows, yeah, if it's happy. Yeah. Well, good luck for Anish to figure this out, yeah, because after rook a3, rook ac3, there might be some a5 counterplay as well. Mm -hmm. And it leads to very complex endgame. And, uh, and here is the question. If you would know for sure that your opponent blundered this bishop c2, you would be tempted maybe to go for it. But if you suspect that the, the guy has checked it with a the computer, then you might feel like, okay, my position is stable enough. There is no reason to, to, to fall for this provocation. Because also let's not forget that if white wanted, he could have maybe started the, the, the game with rook a2 and then try to double like this. Do you really think that Duda's preparation is so deep that he is somehow playing psychological games? Well, I mean, he is good. He's good at this. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I see like uh, he's getting more and more confidence in uh, every single Champions Chess Tour event. And uh, also his, his preparation, he adjusted very much to, to this format also. Yeah, he enjoys it. One can see that he has a lot of confidence. Wow, okay. In any case, it's it's very interesting, but of course, this is not the only uh, game of the day, and we have a... What do we have? I mean, if you look at this position, it looks completely wild and crazy, but actually it featured a very quiet Reti. Well, this is uh, that Gambit, right? That Reti that turned into a Slav Gambit, and... Uh... Yeah, Magnus actually has beaten uh, Shakri, I think, in Stavanger with this variation with Knight C3. So definitely, if already Shakri is ready to go for it, he's very well prepared. Let's take a look. E4, B5, Queen E2, A5. Shakri played himself against uh, Richard Rapport, I think, this uh, exact line with the white pieces. So yeah, Shakri is very much into this. Knight BD7, D5. And then CD5, E5, B4. Wow. Okay. While the Rodeo, all right. Yeah. This uh, EF, Knight F6, Knight B5, Bish, uh, E6 first. Yeah. And, and then suddenly A4 protecting this Knight on B5. Bishop A6, Knight FD4. What, what is your, your feeling? I don't know. I was, I was going to ask you exactly the same question. Yeah. I, I just don't know. At first, it looked to me that black should be fine with all these pawns. But now that I see the knight on b5 and the bishop coming to f4 and maybe coming to e5, I'm not so sure. I think I would rather be white, to be honest. 
Well, honestly, I'm completely confused. Yeah, I hate such positions which I can't really evaluate. Yeah, I just don't have uh, as well the feeling that who should be happy. Of course, if you kind of work on this opening and you know that this piece sacrifice is kind of a logical follow-up and then you know computer evaluation and you know also what kind of moves and directions they, they are suggesting, it's a different story. But just like this, it's uh, Magnus has opted for knight fd4. He's up on the clock a bit, but no, none of them has blitzed everything out. Yeah, they might be out of theory by now. By now, I mean, I, I feel that this knight on f6 is is the destiny of the position because it doesn't have a good square. Um, ideally, you would like to bring it to d7, c5. Uh, but I, I'm afraid that knight d7 will probably allow knight takes e6. Yeah, it would be very tempting. Takes, yeah. takes and then uh, will probably not end well for black. And yeah, suddenly we collected all the three pawns back for the sacrifice piece and we are having the initiative. Yeah, so unless this somehow uh, works tactically, which it doesn't, oh look, queen, queen f6. Queen f6 maybe is possible, yeah. But I mean, okay, it's uh, just... We, we highlighted the line, but yeah, it's uh, even, even that, yeah, takes, takes, look, d6 keeps on harassing black a bit. Maybe, yeah. But then yeah. if you do not play knight d7, I just don't see what black will do with this knight on f6 because it doesn't have uh, the square e4. It's not happy on e8. And uh, white is preparing bishop f4, e5, right? And... Yeah, it's always very important to have a plan in such uh, situations. Yeah, that that clearly helps. Yeah, bishop f4, bishop e5 would be dream scenario. Is it? Yeah, but it's too slow. Yeah, I wanted to to suggest maybe that can black play a move like rook e8, or maybe it's not slow. Let let me try rook e8. Well, your idea is to play bishop f4, e5, right? Maybe at least to discourage you. Yeah, force you to burn some time and. Uh, mm -hmm. But they can also jump with my knight, yeah? For instance, knight c6 and then play knight e5. But then I claim that why didn't you go knight e5 at the start? That is very... And bishop takes b5, yeah? So this is rubbish. Yes. This, I think, is rubbish. And if I play bishop f4, e5 will work, right? I don't know. I was trying to bluff you and hope that you will calculate instead of me. <laughs> I mean, takes... I know that you are a great calculator, yeah? So I will bishop trust e5. you. Yeah, bishop e5. Knight d7. Knight but this one is just very complex, right? Knight c6. Queen b6. And I thought maybe bishop takes d5. And just takes, yeah. And knight e5 takes and queen f3 and then rook f8. Maybe, maybe takes rook e5. You can take on c4 if you want, but... But okay, I can also it's... take bishop takes f7, right? Yeah, okay, bishop uh, king h8. And then queen takes c4. In any case, very complicated, but in mm -hmm. the game, we are seeing something completely different. So yeah, we have to forget about my rook e8. Uh, Shakti, actually, after spending some four, four and a half minutes, he opted for bishop takes b5. He eliminated this knight. A very interesting uh, choice because I was worried. Okay, first of all, I wasn't exactly sure how white will recapture a, b, or knight b5. Both, move, both moves looked interesting. Magnus opted for a, b5. But I also understand, yeah, because for instance, now after a b queen uh, b six, it's difficult to see how this pawn will stay alive on b five. That's why I wasn't exactly sure, yeah, because mm -hmm. knight takes b five can stay there for for quite some time. But after, on the other hand, Magnus is trying to probably play something very concrete. Yeah, bishop yeah. e three, e five, e five, knight f five. I probably should not allow this, yeah? Well, who knows? You are collecting, but maybe I can even go 97. Yeah, 97 check. I, I missed. I wanted to <laughs> harass your bishop, but I... Yeah, yeah, 97, knight takes d5 is probably good, yes. Yes. Yeah, maybe after bishop e3, I have to, 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 to get patient, yeah, and move my queen, but it's not clear where, right? Because queen b7, queen takes c4. Yeah, just to highlight this, that this is a tactic. Mm-hmm. Which we and finally Shakti goes for rook e8. Yes, yeah. so basically he's combining these ideas. Yeah, that uh, he is trying to keep e5, uh, but but slightly strange choice. Yeah, that you are giving up the bishop first, giving white all the op options of eventually jumping with the knight, and we, we see the evolution by jumping as well. 
Well, he probably thought that uh, this bishop on a6 has no other purpose. At some point, it will have to take the knight on b5, maybe. Um... Yeah, but... But okay, bishop, maybe, yeah. maybe simply because of uh, the computer evolution, I'm uh, skeptical, but I do feel that suddenly, I don't know, bishop e3 is quite tempting. Can I play bishop e3? Maybe queen b8? Queen b8. I wanted to follow it up with b3, but maybe you can play e5 and knight c6, queen takes b5. I, I missed it. I wanted to get this, that you play c3 and then my queen protects the pawn. Mm -hmm. But I'm maybe not in time to do that. But in fact, you can also play b3 in the starting position. In the starting right? position, yes. Yeah, maybe actually now that you have given up the light square bishop so quickly, mm -hmm. it might make sense. Yeah, b3. b3, c3, and then knight c6. Yeah, Yeah, in this case, we can immediately jump to c6 because the, the queen protects the pawn. Yeah, looks, suddenly, yeah, the black pawns good. are vulnerable also. And BC on the board, yeah. Yeah, this is... We're not so bad at this, me and you. No, not at all, especially in, in this combination that both of us are here. Yeah, we can <laughs> communicate, we can discuss things, and if we have some doubt, then we just ask the other colleague, yeah? This is actually uh, the ultimate, uh, I mean, we have like the ultimate cheating machine. We can play well, and then if nothing works, then we'll ask Tadej, yeah, and then he will, he will yes. give us. We the, also have the evaluation, but just in case, yeah, that, okay, we at least get some hint, yeah, what computer things. No moves, but still, yeah, B3. I mean, the, yeah, this B3 is a game changer, yeah, because if, Black is uh, forced to blockade his pawns on the dark squares, then, then okay, white will have lovely blockade on the light squares, and the knight will be very mobile, and pawn on b5 is protected by the queen. Yeah, th this is exactly what I feel that stylistically, actually, Magnus, because he's so calm, and he's able to play also like a computer. Yeah, he's not affected by, for example, Shakriar's creative mood and all this craziness that, for example, other people would be, for example, uh, psychologically or practically collapsing. Yeah, Magnus is just very happy that he gets a chance that he can punish. Yeah. No, well, that's the thing with, with Shahriar. Yeah, I don't know uh, how um, how your experience with him was. Uh, in my own experience, most of the games that I play against Shahriar, I am winning at some point. Mm -hmm. But I just find this converting against his very resilient style of uh, defending very quick, very difficult. And I think Magnus is just so much better at this, right? I mean, you cannot give Magnus a winning position at any moment in the game because then most likely he'll win, right? Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, that's absolutely... I mean, I feel like uh, Shakti also matured quite a lot, yeah? Because I remember that he had a quite gambling style, then he became also much more solid. Uh, for example, I don't feel like against me, okay, we also haven't played recently, but I mean, mm -hmm. like, for example, five, six years ago, he was already playing very positionally, yeah? He, he didn't want to do anything crazy, and he was driving me crazy by not doing anything crazy, yeah? That's okay. Where is my chance? Yeah, please do something. Maybe, maybe it also depends uh, on his opponent, yeah? I also think that against Magnus, he feels motivated to do something crazy. Because I think Magnus, he feels that, okay, something special. Yeah? He wants to beat him also. Yeah, he wants to play interest. Yeah, mm -hmm. whenever we have the interview with, uh, with Shakri, it's always so funny because I'm pretty sure that he will be saying that, yeah, I want to play interesting games. The game was interesting. I mean, these are, these are his trademarks, yeah? Mm -hmm. he, he just loves. And Magnus goes rook a4, wow, because he, he gets out of this uh, long diagonal pin. No, I thought it was the most natural move, yeah, because knight takes b3, a4, he doesn't want to allow. Yes. So he plays rook a4 first, so that he can get to play knight takes b3 without uh, the danger of allowing this past pawns. And um, as you pointed out also, yeah, the pawn on b5 is now defended, which means white can take on b3 without worrying about the pawn, yeah? Yeah, and then suddenly, yeah, also very important that black doesn't have this knight e4 jump mm -hmm. anymore. Besides knight x, bc will be also very effective against knight d7, yeah? That we yeah. take on bc, cover the c5 square at the same time, knight b6 is impossible due mm -hmm. to rook takes a5. 
<clears throat> yeah, all makes perfect sense. Yeah, just two, well, three little moves by Magnus. Yeah, and then everything is clarified. But how do you do this exactly I, with all these timings? Yes, no, that's uh, that's true. No, I also noticed, yeah, if somebody plays really well, um, especially in a rapid game, it doesn't take very long for the position to to deteriorate, right? Like if you, especially for instance, you probably notice this too, yeah, if you have a complicated uh, middle game against the computer, then you will not lose in 10 moves, yeah? Most likely you will lose like three, four moves, yeah? It doesn't exactly. take very long. <laughs> Exactly. This actually drives me crazy. Yeah, that I'm not used to this. That usually, for example, I like to move the pieces a little bit. Yeah, just mm -hmm. to get the personal touch of the of the position. Yeah, and then if I'm playing against someone who is checking it with a super engine, then you know I I really get frustrated because all my moves and my thoughts are somehow dubious. Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, and and then at some point you know you try for one two minutes and then okay no okay let me also check with computer yeah that, yeah chess chess change completely yeah all right so here now Shakri has to come up with something it's not easy at all what do we have okay for example Wesley against Arjun is a very interesting strategic position because it seems to me like White is clearly better. And uh, do you see any counterplay for Arjun or you agree? Well, I mean, Black has Rook DF7, yeah? And I mean, there is quite some counterplay, but uh, maybe White has something very concrete. Because I think if Black gets to play Rook F7, maybe he can mate on F1 one day. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you are not abandoning the hope, yeah? Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, another, but there is a question, yeah, that, uh, for example, Bishop G4, should we try to trade the light squared bishops and then a6 pawn, but then you will get queen takes c8, queen g4 counterplay. Let's just show this what we are mm -hmm. talking about. So rook d f7, bishop takes c8. I guess there are no mating tricks yet, but you take mm -hmm. with the queen on c8. And uh, for example, rook takes a6. Also, I'm getting overloaded. Yeah, you might be able to play knight d5 and well, queen d5 a6. And rook queen f1. a6 already wins, yeah. Exactly, just simple tactics wins due to this checkmate so it's kind of tempting to trade the light square bishops but once you see all these tactics then you might be also tempted just to play a move like bishop f3 some stabilizing move well bishop f3 does stabilize but also allows some knight h3 check yeah which yeah and okay i ignore this yeah. i just ignore this well then now maybe rook f7 yeah rook df7 at least it wouldn't be obvious to me. Yeah, not obvious. And look at this. We are talking about where to move this bishop and Wesley goes b4 and computer perfectly agrees with this move. Well, I thought maybe b4, b5 is, is some sort of a threat. Yeah, maybe b5 is actually serious. This is the point. And then you open up the a file. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you trade the weak pawn, but you actually give the chance to enter with the rooks. Yeah, very nice. And of course, I mean, who cares about knight e2, queen e2? We have this lovely knight on d5. No, I don't think knight e2 is a threat, yeah? And especially yeah. after rook f7, d5, if black doesn't have anything concrete, then he will be just pushed off the board, right? Yeah, because a, b, c, b is horrible hmm. to allow this. Yeah, and then the rooks will start entering. And then the queen also doesn't have really good squares, right? Where does it go? Yeah. No, this is this is horrible. And okay, this is... This is bad news for Indian fans and for Arjun fans because we have seen that whenever Arjun starts with a loss in the first game, then uh, knowing the, all this handicap. But I also feel, you know, that his style is very demanding, yeah, that he plays very sharp uh, chess. He needs a lot of energy and everything. And then this starting at 1.30, I, I think that he's just mm -hmm. not able to show exactly all his skills, that, as you said, yeah. It is possible. It is possible. But also, I think almost nobody profits from this, yeah, from starting middle of the night. Yeah, no. But I mean, we have seen Ding Liren. I mean, he, actually, now I understand that how big heroic efforts he was producing because he was fighting and then uh, 
somehow you know just some very small things were missing yeah in the very mm-hmm. last game somewhere something in big time trouble but the, his chess was perfect yeah it just shows his incredible class yeah no i was i was very very impressed yeah at some point we were watching some match where he was uh he was fighting i don't even remember how this ended but he was fighting on absolutely equal footing with magnus exactly at like six o'clock in the morning and i was thinking i mean how strong should you be for that right it just exactly I also have the but yeah Arjun uh, in a lot of trouble. The big question is yeah how to react after B four B five. Black Black needs tricks yes after B five. Black probably has to take C yeah, B on the board, and uh, we need we need a trick yeah like can I go Queen D seven and then search for tricks. Yeah, you are the trickster yeah you know that I'm the the old conservative guy yeah, I always try to defend everything but you can maybe create something but it's I'm, I'm not really seeing this yeah for instance knight b6 now uh, knight b6 because i don't want to give mm-hmm. my bishop on c8 yeah then i will not have any attack left and now i was thinking maybe like knight h3 check takes if if you take then queen h3 then maybe i have an attack Knight C. Very, very exactly. Yeah, knight C. I, I wanted to go bishop H six. Now. Aha, uh-huh, beautiful. But then maybe you you have C four. Yeah, even this might not be enough. Yeah, because your rook joins. Oh, lovely. Yeah, your rook joins the fray. Yeah, and then I, I don't have enough. I just have to go with the floor. Listen to Rustam uh, calling out action for white and for black. You know, I'm just making my moves here. <laughs> Thank you for your support. Yeah, this is, but it's it's a very nice illustration. Yeah, that what we are dealing with and what we are talking about. Queen d7, by the way, on the board. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because one could argue that also a move like bishop c4 is kind of tempting because the queen protects on g2, but your queen g4 or something might appear. A queen g4 might be annoying, yes. And then again, all these knight h3 checks, mm-hmm. uh, then queen takes c4, eventually somewhere the f1 square is weak. Knight f2 check, yeah, this this is certainly not something that white wants. No, I feel knight b6 is, is very tempting positionally. Um, but of course, uh, Wesley will have to make sure. Yeah, and Wesley is a beast, yeah, because he's so good in these calculations, yeah, that I, I noticed that in some of the games, yeah, that I would already tend to worry yeah that okay how do i stabilize and then he's still able to make this one to computer moves yeah that is required to and then it's all clear yeah of course because if you find the right direction then already calculating working out the lines is not so difficult yeah finding those directions that's that's always a tough choice yeah i mean yeah, we'll, we'll see yeah he still has eight and a half minutes um because I also yeah. know that sometimes computer would play rook a7, but probably not here. Yeah, I think here rooks will have enough files to create problems. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting, yeah, that that should be the case. All right, so Arjun is taking, no, I mean, West is taking his time. Arjun is trying to create comp, some, some counterplay. Let's quickly jump to Plug's game because we haven't seen it and we, we were asking the question, how will Plug react? to what happened yesterday and we see now that actually he's reacting very well he's uh, he, he has been i think pressing this game from he's the a, from a the start up yeah. and uh, my only question is can black play knight d2 knight d2 because g7 is defended right so you cannot create a mating threat yet yeah, so you want to harass this rook, yeah, as long as you can. I just want to attack it, yeah. So you, if you play rook d1, I want to go queen c1 or so. Uh, queen c1 or queen c2? I, I cannot go queen c1, right? Because I thought if you take, then I have perpetual check. Yes, exactly. But now right. you have queen b8 check. Yeah, I'm overloaded. I cannot do everything. Exactly. Yeah, that is, is very unfortunate. But but just to show, because this is, of course, very nice, that takes, takes. What is this queen sacrifice? Well, it's not checkmate, but... Suddenly, knight f1, this combo, yeah, the famous mm-hmm. perpetual check is possible. Knight d2 on the board. Yeah, but unfortunately, also after rook d2, your move queen c2 fails to the same trick, basically. Yeah, white will just take rook takes d2. 
Yes. I mean, okay, you will have some rook c1 check or queen c1 check, but... No, no, just I will take rook d2 right ah, away. Ah, and then queen b8. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. it. Yeah, of course. Queen b8, queen b7, and... Uh... And thank you very much. Yeah. And then you have a nice choice whether you want to checkmate me to take my rook. You know, you can do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. That's already something with which uh, Liam won't agree. And also with the speed, yeah. Prague still uh, has seven minutes. Yeah, it basically shows that. Yeah, this this is what I like. Yeah, when uh, we see a composed Prague, yeah, he 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 needs some strategical stability. Though don't play strange things. It's not not Prague style. Yeah, strategic stability and from strength of the position then to create things. This is this is very nice. Yeah, rook d1 played. Yeah, this game will be over very soon, right? I mean, now basically that knight d2 was connected with all the tricks, but if they don't work, then then it's basically over. Uh, he played queen c1 and now queen b8 check. Uh, well, as far as I can see, forces a winning end game, right? Yeah, uh, what we have after been rook c8, yeah. I can take rook c1 simply. Yeah? Yeah, queen b8 check played. King f7, okay, of course, yeah, you already have to go with the flow. But this... Yeah, I expected that queen takes b7 would be checkmate. Yeah, one feels if this is not checkmate, then what, yeah? <laughs> yes. Yeah, black can go king g... Well, I thought king g6, to be honest. Um... <sighs> we can still go knight g7... Check and then we can also take on e6 with check. We can take on e6, but it's still we still have to show the final uh, final touch, yeah. The final touch, yeah. But I mean, it's just nice, yeah, that we are collecting things. Oh, we collected everything. But what do we do now? Yeah, knight g7 check. Okay, king f8 played. It, it will feature, I think, the the same element. Yeah, knight takes e6, king e8. Ah, we can go queen b4 check. Queen b4, king g7, queen takes d2. It's not checkmate, but... Uh... Good enough, yeah. This is <laughs> but it's good enough. Yeah. Yes. Ah, but actually, why didn't Liam went in the opposite direction with king d8? Um, maybe there too, something similar would be possible. King e6. Yeah, should, and, should be, yeah. Check, check, and... Uh, um... Yeah, by the way, very interesting development that Wesley still hasn't made up his mind after Queen D7. Yeah, he's done to four minutes. It shows that it's not so easy even if you are Wesley. Mm -hmm. He does play Knight B6, yeah? Yeah, he finally goes for Knight B6. Keeps on the good tradition of uh, simply listening to Rustam. That is a good tradition, yeah? Yeah, I mean, so far it proves to be perfect tradition. And what about Shakliar? I see that Shakliar lost a couple of pawns, but he still has two and he has some activity, but on the other hand, it should be a method of technique for Magnus to convert, yeah? Only two pawns. Well, yeah. I mean, this should, should be almost winning and it's also one of those uh, positions. Normally, you would find it very difficult to convert against Shakliar. But first of all, Magnus is Magnus and he also has nine times the time on the clock. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. How is this even possible, yeah? In this position to have almost 10 minutes against one is... Uh... Yeah, it basically... Ah, yes. The, you remember after Rook A4, we even spoke about this, that mm -hmm. Knight, is, uh, Knight, B3, Knight B6 runs into Rook A5, but uh, Shakti, I felt like this is the only way he can mm -hmm. maybe activate his Knight. Yeah, he went for this. But this yeah. was all, all the four sequence. Yeah, one of our viewers was asking, I thought it was a very good question, he was asking about knight e5 instead of knight b6. One of our viewers in the chat. Ah, uh, from this angle, yeah, that yeah. you keep an eye on the e5 pawn and then you want to go knight c4 maybe. And this is. Yes. I thought it's a fair question, yeah. It's a fair question, yeah. But uh, basically, I also understand it's very much Shakti style, this knight b6, knight a4, knight c3 jump, yeah, that he, he wanted to be as aggressive as possible. Mm -hmm. All right, so the current position is f5. Magnus has all the time in the world. He will convert this. Uh, in the game between Jan Shistov and Danish Giri, things are not that exciting. I mean, white is pressing. It will be a very long game, so we won't be missing out on any action if we return. And uh, what about Arjun? 
or hang on no before arjun let's let's wait for prak that will he go yeah because he did collect the e6 pawn and then uh he went back knight g7 i'm expecting king d8 yeah because otherwise you just lose the knight yeah king d8 on the board and here oh. what is the finishing touch you can also go queen b8 check right yeah, or queen a8 check and then queen, I mean, king d7, queen a7 check and then you will. But then, then he king has c8. Room. Okay. No, I thought maybe we can just uh, play queen b8 and then mm -hmm. queen maybe e8. Ah, even queen e8 is possible. Oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> this is. <laughs> but I don't, I don't yet see it. Yeah, king c7. It's not queen e7, black. But I mean, you always have queen h5 now, also protecting the rook, yeah? So maybe this just is... queen h5 will do, yeah? Maybe queen h5. This is, and then, okay, how many five pawns up are we yeah, or you what? Five pawns up and actually with a decisive attack, yeah? Once yes, it's up yes. giving chess. Oh, yeah, basically that, that's it. But yeah, Prague goes for queen a8. It, it will be the same. Because king c7 is queen a5 check. So black is forced to go to d7 or e7. And then he can go queen e8 check. And this is kind of beautiful, yeah, that against king c7, queen a5 check, and otherwise we have queen e8 <laughs> check and queen h5 defending the, the two squares fighting for the d1 and d2 squares. Mm -hmm. I find it quite interesting to highlight. Well, okay, Plug will start with a win, exactly what he needs and what all the Indian fans needs, of course, from Prague, rooting for Prague. Ah, uh, hang on. By the way, also queen e8 check, queen e5 check, and queen a1 does the job as well, yeah? <laughs> Protecting. So Prague even has a choice. That's actually funny. I have to bring the queen to a1. Yes, yes. Of course, there is no need. If queen h5 is good enough, then it's even more active. Is yeah, and, possible and by, sorry just to, to inform everyone that Shakti are resigned already, so... Magnus has won his game. I think it also shows that uh, that Shakri has way too much respect for Magnus, yeah? That otherwise he would have not resigned yet. Yeah, I don't think he would resign against me. Uh, just... Yeah, Queen H5 on the board. We just go for a very quick update here that, yeah, basically after Knight B3, G5, Rook A2, he called it a day. Okay, it looks bad, but Rook A6 is coming. But we have live action, so... We continue. Yeah, plug opted for Queen H5, has things under control, and and basically the the whole world can stop, uh, you know, feeling worried for for Prague. Yeah, he does his job. He comes back after yesterday. This this victory was very important, and I think now he will forget. Basically, always what I feel as a chess player that the best medicine and the only medicine to to losses are good games, good moves, and then everything comes back automatically and you are forgetting what happened in the past. Yes. The therapy. Yes, no, this is, of course, the best therapy. Uh, I mean, the best therapy is to do well, to play well. I mean, can't, can't argue with that, right? Yes, yes. This is very nice. And okay, now also Queen E2 is basically just finishing the game on the spot. No intrigue possible because Rook C2, we go Knight E6, check Knight D4. If if we want to be very professional, but uh, Plug has two minutes on the clock, he can do whatever he wants. I he just needs a modicum of it, of attention, yeah. The rook c1 that it will not annoy him. Ah, uh, hang on, queen e2, then rook c1. Did I yeah. fell into it? Well, a little bit, yeah. But, yes, uh, yes, okay. So but that's just a it. Bit. Being professional is not not that good, yeah. <laughs> Maybe white can just go. Like ah, queen queen e ah, because look, c1 still does not threaten anything. Yeah, so I have. Well, there you have another move. Yeah, maybe he. Look, c1 played. Maybe you can go knight e6, but you have to be a bit careful. I, mean, I have to be a bit careful. Yeah, and, and okay, I don't want to play queen e1 because I don't know. Knight f3 check or something. That well, queen e1 probably will do nicely. Knight f3, gf, and then queen g7, king h1. Yeah, it, it, it does the job, but somehow it's a bit passive. On the other hand, yeah, the queen b1 is a big threat. Or queen a1. 
Yeah, I wonder if you can play something like Banner King H2. Yeah, on the board. He's just like he's listening to me. <laughs> yeah, everyone is listening to you. I mean, I think they check out the broadcast and after the first day, all right, Peter is talking, talking, just forget about this guy, but Rustam knows what he what he what what what's happening. Yeah, King H2, very nice. Yeah, that's it. Getting out of all these tricks, yeah, and uh, it should be it. After all, black is also pinned, yeah? Well, in fact, now the knight is actually hanging. Yeah, just... Exactly, yes. So, okay, we can expect resignation any moment, mm -hmm. but who knows? Yeah, Liam is also a very big fighter. But okay, he has to have something to fight with. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I mean, right now he's four pawns behind, yeah. I mean, the, the structure is so strange. It feels like there is a bunch versus very few. Yeah, it's uh, mm -hmm. even hard to count. All right. What about uh, Anish Giri? He's in a big suffering mood. Look at this. It's not only pawn down, but white has the lovely structure, brilliant pieces, black skin in a lot of trouble. All right. The, this is not the most exciting. What about Arjun? Because this game... Yeah, and both players down to 1 minute 20, 1 minute 30. It might be some spectacular time scramble. Well, white played b6, yeah? Which means that finally black can attack something. When the pawn was on b5, white had no weaknesses. Yeah, on the other hand, black hinted with h5 that, okay, he wants to push the pawn. So, mm -hmm. Vastly also wanted to do something himself. b6, look, b8. Clearly, white has the upper hand. The, the structure is clearly in White's favor. The rooks are active, but uh, the game, the heat is on with 50 seconds on the clock. Yeah, not easy at all. Yeah. In fact, because he doesn't want to play B7. Yeah, let's face it. Yeah, Maybe he has to go B7, but he doesn't want to because it somehow kills his rook on A7. Right? Exactly. And if he plays rook B1, he has to worry about the back rank potentially and... Uh... Yeah, I feel in your voice that you are hoping that maybe Arjun can pull off something here in time, time trouble. Well, if I had 20 seconds in this position with White against Arjun, I assure you, I would not be 100% certain of the outcome. And look at this. Vastly goes for B7, H4, blitz out. Yeah, now what do you do now? Yeah, you cannot play H3. Cannot really allow H3 either. Yeah, very tricky spot. And down to 15 seconds. 26 now after the 10 extra. I thought h3, knight takes h3 was an issue. Yeah, but then maybe some queen e2, but then even e4 is hanging. Yeah, I know. Maybe he wants to take on h3, play queen h2, but that's unlikely. Or maybe after knight h3, he will just play in a bishop. I, I don't see it. Yeah, maybe he'll play with rook a8. I don't know. Yeah, inter. I mean, he created a loft for his his king, so maybe there is this argument that eventually he can play rook eight. But b seven pawn is hanging. Well, at least why did not exercise full control, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All lies on uh, on this game because yeah, Pragnanda they traded the rooks, so there is no intrigue. It's just a completely winning end game. Mm -hmm. And uh, Anish is a lot of trouble, so this is clearly the most exciting of the games right now also he is really thinking yes yeah? so knight h3 well, is he obviously. takes it and i want to see how quickly will vastly make up his mind so what did he plan i don't know it was, it was possibly i mean he is very likely in some sort of panic right now yeah he goes rook a8 definitely he's in panic mode right now rook a8 normally rook takes b7 right yeah, look, look at it. Bishop f8, and then what's going and on? And rook a8, and hope for the best. Yeah, king g7. I will draw some arrows. That's the position where we are, and we might be seeing this. I mean, by the way, now black is two pawns up already. Yeah, no, he, he did not manage to keep. Yeah, he goes Control. bishop d5 first. Protecting the pawn, but also leaving the f1 square. Yeah, Anish designed. Duda takes the lead. 
and Liam has also a design. So Prague is also in perfect control. And we'll have the, wow, this is the last game of the round, yeah? So we will have to focus on this one. We can focus fully, yeah. We can enjoy this team and the stun pressure. Yeah, why is two pawns down, yeah? I'm... Yeah, okay. We know that this, this bishop, of course, is a monster. Yeah, white has nice positional compensation. But before he had all this, with that and with a b5 pawn and yeah takes takes queen h2 queen f3 check queen g2 queen takes oh. e3 well he can also go queen e3 queen h4 queen h6 yeah two pawns up i don't know it's probably not easy but he can do that he can also go queen f3 queen okay G3, well queen basically queen that's a draw yeah because i can play rook a trade the rooks and it's a fortress i can play rook a8 right away so i need to go queen f3 check to keep winning chances yeah, if you want to play for a win, who knows? Because after all, Arjun was under tremendous pressure throughout the game. I mean, he's so many pawns up. Of course, he wants to play queen f3, queen g2, queen takes e3. Okay, yes, queen f3 check played, queen g2, queen e3. You know Arjun very well. I mean, because I think black has a draw in hand, right? If he, if he, if he wants. But maybe that's it. You, you don't really have more, yeah? Because oh, the... queen f3 check defense against checks. Yes, on the board. He probably goes. King I mean, G1. King G1 is only move. Yeah. Or, or Queen G. Yeah, King G1, because okay, otherwise, look, be to check against King H2. H3. Yeah. I was wondering about H3 or maybe Rook F8. Yeah. Yeah, because now you are threatening H2 check. Now maybe White has Rook F1. White has to play rook f1, yeah. Rook f1, h2, king h2, and then queen h5 mate, so. Down to 20 seconds, yeah. White needs to play rook f1, and then, okay, if black is worried, he can go queen g2 check. Ah, no, no, rook f1, h2, and then rook b2 check, yeah? Ah, rook b2 check. Okay, king g1. Ah, and then queen e3, queen h3, queen h2 check, mate, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow, he has to play rook a8, all right. But then it's, uh, and it's on the board. And apparently, according to computer, this is a draw. This is remarkable. Man. It's remarkable, yeah. Absolutely remarkable. I mean, okay, this is the, this is like a Sveshnikov bishop, yeah? This uh, white... I mean, light squared bishop and this bishop on g7 is dead. Queen on g6 cover, yeah, and queen g2, yeah. So that's it. It's a draw offer. What a game. Yeah, I, quite a game, yeah. Wesley yes. did not manage to keep control, but it often happens in this type of positions, this king's Indian type of positions. Yeah, you're winning positionally, but difficult to keep perfect control. Yeah, basically, I have to say that, yeah, he lost control at some point, but then... When it looked like things are out of control, then he managed to, to handle it fantastically. Eh? It was so easy to collapse with white. I think this position, 90% of the players would lose instantly with white. But exactly. he had no time, no position left, two pawns down. Yeah? And somehow he managed to make all the best moves. Yeah, and things are turning. Yeah, before you were better, you had time on the clock and so on. Interesting if we, we see some interview from, from someone, it, it feels like... It could be an interesting moment to ask Wesley what he was thinking about this game. Wesley, what the hell were you thinking? Yeah. Wesley, a really, it looked like a really dominating game from your side, but then something went wrong. What happened? Yeah, I couldn't find a uh, knockout blow. I mean, I was better pretty much the whole game, and I have a pass pawn, but I allowed him some counterplay on the king side which shouldn't lead to anything. But I couldn't find a win. There's got to be uh, a win there somewhere. Uh, and then I was fortunate enough not to lose because he sacrificed a piece. <clears throat> and uh, it very nearly worked. Like, I missed rook bb8 in the end. Maybe rook takes f8 was much better. But it's not winning. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what went wrong. But I got really low on time. That's also a problem. Like, I always think that this is a long game because you have 10 second increment. And then it is a long game, but at the same time, you have to make some moves here and there. It's easy to get fooled by the 10 second increment. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I always think I'd never run out of time, but like uh, today I had 
maybe four seconds at some point. The other day I had one second at some point. <laughs> it's easy to fall asleep. Uh, um, yeah, but but um, you know it's uh, so it's uh, I think the result is pretty fair. That's All it. right. Well, three more games to go. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, I mean, it was very interesting to listen to Vesti's interview because he was saying that, yeah, he was bad to everything, but with the time control, he knows that he has the 10 seconds extra and, and so on. But, uh, and he even mentioned that it's easy to fall asleep. Well, guys, let's just bring up this position. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine that you have like 20 seconds on your clock? Everything is hanging. The king on h1 is, I mean, black has just sacrificed his knight on h3 has captured the b7 pawn i think it's time to wake up at this moment and this is exactly what happened with wesley i mean in this and then he navigated all this craziness with such an ease and uh, came up with fantastic defense uh, and uh, saved the draw i think finally he should be also happy that uh, he he got the draw because th this looked very scary yeah rook bb8 he highlighted that he missed the move rook b8 and he maybe should have taken on f8, but he mentioned that it wasn't winning or, or whatever. So probably he felt like it's 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 not enough. He tried bishop d5, but after rook bb8, he had to go for this takes takes, accepting the knight sacrifice. Queen h2, then after queen f3, check queen g2. Queen takes e3, queen takes g6. You need... Incredible nerves because white's king is kind of in all kinds of checks, but white is also setting checkmate with queen h5. So that was the, the reason why also Arjun couldn't really make more than what he did. Queen f3 check, king g1, h3, and then rook a8. We, we suddenly speculated that maybe rook f1, however, rook f1 would have been a blunder after h2 check, king h2, rook b2 check. King g1, and what we talked about, that back has tons of checks, and he can force the king to the h file, and then finally deliver a checkmate with queen h2. Wesley has foreseen all of it and did not fall for the trap. He forced the trade of um, trade of the rook, rooks, and suddenly it turned out that without the rooks, there is no way to create any mating sets whatsoever, because the white queen on g6 is wonderfully Protecting the g2 square, he's also setting with uh, queen h5 check to give checkmate. And then Arjun thought, yeah, that's it. Enough is enough. And with queen g2, force the draw. What an incredible run. Three decisive games, one spectacular draw. What else can we ask for? Yeah, very interesting round. Yeah? Also, very, very fast play. I thought this is uh, probably our fastest round. A lot of games, uh, like Magnus finished with nine minutes on the clock. And I think Pragnanand also had a lot of control. Also, Duda was very convincing, right? Yeah, somehow everybody seemed convincing who, who won their game. And, uh, wow, let's just maybe very quickly take a look at this Anish game. Because it looked like uh, typical Ragozin, yeah, Rook A3, we were speculating about Bishop C2, who knows what is it, but uh, I believe Duda knew what he was doing. Anish said, thank you very much, I'm not interested. Goes for the most straightforward, yeah, G5, Knight E4, A, B, A, B, Rook A1. Takes, 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 Rook C8. And we get this double-edged kind of Ragozin endgames, yeah, black has this typical idea of going knight b6, knight a4, targeting the c3 pawn. So I'm very interested to see how Duda handled this knight e1, knight b6, f3, kicking the knight away, knight d2. Yeah, I beg your pardon, but like, why knight d2? Yeah, you, you just eliminate the bishop or? I just, I just take the bishop and then I think, you know what to do after that, yeah? But that's a bishop, right? You, you take it. It and looks very can, solid for black, yeah? You can go knight c4, I mean, and then this knight on a1 is not great, yeah? Takes and bc. And, you know, Mikhail Gurevich would ask, yeah, who is better and why, you know? Exactly. Yeah, very, very nice illustration. I mean, it felt like it's it's good, but uh, somehow Anish got overambitious or he, he lost the sense of danger. Yeah, he jumped with knight d2, then knight d3. 
Knight a4, yeah, because ah, uh, he was counting on this knight b1. I, I, I believe that he was playing for an advantage, yeah. Well, but just didn't work out, right? Because he took the pawn and then turned out that he has um, nothing great left about his position. Yeah, why well, has his bishops, the king coming to d2, and uh... wow, I mean, no, and it turns out that yeah, black knights are somehow stuck. Yeah, the knight on c3 is trapped. Mm -hmm. Black played c5, yeah, breaking up the structure, takes, takes. So at the moment, black is pawn up. However, after bishop e5, it's clear that if anyone, then only white can be better, yeah, because the bishops are just too powerful. And the knight on b4 is a monster, yeah. Weak pawns. Bishop b5, knight b5, rook a4, and, and that's it. That's when we have seen that the pawn on d5 might fall and it will be a big torture. Yeah, this g4 may be also unfortunate a bit, but okay, it's very, very difficult to defend something like this in rapid chance. Maybe he should have played king h7, no? To just kind of improve his king instead of Yeah, I, I don't don't like this giving the f4 square yeah, as well. Yeah, it, it's more like a weakening, and the g file also opens up maybe for white, much more than for black. Knight b1, a desperate move. Yeah, this knight on c is kind of trapped. That's another big problem. Do you remember the classical game Kasparov Petrosian? I think from 82 or 83, where Kasparov won an endgame with a very similar material balance. Yeah, there was yeah, there, there, there was this very nice game. Yeah, yeah. So it was it was basically the same. Yeah, rook knight bishop against rook knight bishop, but with opposite colored bishops. And at some point when the attack started, there was no way of holding it back. Yeah, it's always whoever starts the attack benefits. And it finally turned out to be a very convincing victory by Duda. This knight e1, knight dc, knight b4. And Ani should have never been tempted to, to go for more than just trading on g3 and then be solid. Wow, okay. So, very interesting. And Prague, we missed that game. We can maybe just very quickly take a look what happened there in the beginning. It was an Imzo. c5, bishop d3, d5. Takes, 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 knight bd7. Yeah, it has a very solid reputation for black, but also very solid for white. Yeah, knight e2, the, the key move of, of all these positions. White is ready to give up the bishop, but he gets b3, bishop b2. It's like playing reversed style of, of chess, yeah? But it looks like a very nice position for white to play, right? Yes, very easy. Everything comes... Nice, the queen e7, bishop b2, bishop a3, takes, takes, h3, yeah, this is, okay, this is an isolated pawn, white has all the pieces perfectly placed, only that this queen on a3 disturbs a bit because pawn on a2 is weak and probably black can fight for the c file, but these are the positions that the Prague is so strong, knight f4, queen a5, knight g5, rook c6, rook c1, hitting on the e6 bishop, Rook c8 takes, takes. Knight h5, wonderful move. Yeah, mm -hmm. so basically everything, knight f4, knight g5, and then knight g5, knight h5 together, beautiful. Knight e4, met by queen d4, and this is when we joined the action, yeah, that there was no good way of defending. Liam opted Just for this. One second, he couldn't go f6, right, after queen d4. Here, f6, yeah. <clears throat> well, you can go, but I mean, also knight e6, rook e6, knight f4, and then just stay passive. No, I mean, uh, like, does not have a good position, but he, in the game, he lost by force, yeah? This is maybe, at least not losing by force. Yeah, no, definitely not losing. But I mean, also, this one looks very promising for white, of course, mm -hmm. and... And also knight takes e6, rook e6, and then something like knight f4. Yeah, and then maybe rook d6. At least it looks like black has some defensive chances. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it should have been played. Yeah, maybe maybe Liam actually counted on very much on this knight d2, queen mm -hmm. c1 idea, but missed this queen b18 10 mezzo. Yeah, that, that was the key move. Yeah, this, this check <clears throat> destroyed... Black's chances, king f7, queen takes b7, check. 
and no more tricks against White's King. And then Prague went on to win this game. Wow, what the what the first round? What do we have? I mean, now three players need to bounce back. Yeah, the, the good news for all of them that all of them lost with the black pieces. This is, I mean, after all, if you lose, it's uh, much, much better than if you lose with white. Yeah, but of course, it's always difficult, right? You have this, such a short match. But then again, yesterday, Anish came back from 0-2, so we shouldn't uh, write anybody off yet. Yeah, for absolutely. I mean, uh, Shakria, I'm very interested to see how Shakria will react now to, to, to his loss against Magnus. Yeah, he was very aggressive with the black pieces. Now, he did lose with the black pieces. Then what should we expect? I mean, basically, I'm expecting that he will be as aggressive with the white pieces as well. Otherwise, it does not make sense. I think he'll be burning all the bridges, right? And... Yeah, but how do you do that against Magnus? Or do you hope that maybe Magnus will provoke you and then you get the position that you can then uh, counter? But on the other hand, with, with Black now, Magnus won't be fooling around. He will play main repertoire. Yeah, he'll play his whatever his main opening nowadays is. Yeah, against D4, I don't even know. Yeah, that's that's the trick always of Magnus. Yeah, that mm -hmm. he knows all the openings. He can play any of those openings any given day. But probably the Ragozin. I still expect him that he's a Ragozin guy at this moment. No, Ragozin is a very is a very tough opening. Very tough yeah. opening. But there is also, I mean, nowadays people play this uh, uh, this new 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 way of accelerated towers, right? When they go C five, C D, C D. Yeah, yeah that's a force uh... draw. Huh? That, that's a headache yeah for everyone yeah it's, uh, <clears throat> on the other hand uh, it's so ugly yeah i mean i, I remember that the, the first time i saw that end game was uh, from wesley so he was playing it in the in the previous tour i remember it was the skilling open in uh, november 2020 and after the after the game or after already a couple of games then we had him in our broadcast and then Wesley was asking me, you know, showing me tremendous respect and asking me that, Peter, what is your take on it? And I didn't know because I haven't ever seen it. Yeah, Wesley has just invented basically on the highest level that system. Well, he, and he and here we go. He black, right, in that tournament, in this ending. Yeah, yeah, there, there were all those, all those games yeah, between Magnus and, and Wesley. And here we go. Magnus says, you know what? Don't forget, guys, that I love to play the Meran. I would go bishop g5 under circumstance, no? Wow, but Shakria goes easily bishop e2. This is it, not burning bridges. This is the old Portish system. Yeah, tell us everything because I know that you are one of the biggest experts or you have definitely been one of the biggest experts on this Meran. Well, it has this, this, this move has this old idea, yeah, that after dc you don't want to recapture, you want to go a4. Uh, the trick being that after bishop d6, maybe you will go knight d2 and recapture with the knight. Uh, mm. This was, um, what was it? This, some like, I think 1988 when Lyos Portish played the candidates match against Timon, he introduced this idea. He got a very nice position with white, but then unfortunately, I think he lost that game. And it was back in the days when, you know, people played candidates matches and the like. Yeah, those were those were the days. Yeah, it's kind of <clears throat> kind of nice. But then, what do you suggest after Bishop E two? Magnus is also taking his time. He's waiting for Rus time to reveal the secrets, and then he strikes. Yeah, ah, it's completely normal to go Bishop D six castles and then E five. It's completely normal to go B six. Black has a uh, really a uh, uh, wide selection of moves. Also, of course, the way the way uh, Timon played DC A4 is not terrible for Black either. Yeah, but there White is supposed to be a bit better. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and basically, it's always like this: that if you feel like your opponent has a plan or some idea, then you tend to avoid it. Yeah, but uh, Magnus taking his time. I mean, he doesn't know, doesn't know this finesse. I mean, Bishop E2 by now is a really popular move. I I know I'm not a betting man, but I would think you will easily find 700 games and more in the database, probably much more. And Magnus goes for b6. 
Yeah, B6 is also quite normal. Uh, one of the uh, reasons that after bishop d3, b6 is premature is it because white has early e4. Uh, so after bishop e2, b6 is much more justified. Yeah, bishop e2, b6, and uh, Mag Magnus also likes all these b6, bishop b7 setups. I remember that also against queen c2 lines, <clears throat> he was he was doing it, and yeah, Shakri goes for a4. It's one of the main ideas, yeah, in this position. Yeah, in general, a4 is uh, is very nice. Yeah, he avoided this early dc due to this trick. If he would go b3, there would be normal waters. Yeah, a4 threatening a5 is probably annoying for black. Yeah, so now the big question is, should black play, for example, a move like a5, or then white will be able to open up something? Magnus goes bishop b4. Yeah, bishop b4, bishop d2 will force him to make a decision, right? Because this bishop on d4 is hanging a little bit. I mean, after castles, you are thinking about knight xd5. Yeah, I think this will also work. Yeah. This is a lovely trick. Yeah, if black takes on d2, then we have <clears throat> knight takes f6 check first, and then we recapture the bishop and win the game. Otherwise, knight takes d5, cd5, bishop takes d2, d takes c6 is another intermediate move and winning a pawn. So what does Magnus have in mind? Bishop d2, probably queen e7. Yeah, would be a logical follow-up then. Yeah, bishop d2, queen e7, maybe queen b3, and then... Uh... Either a5 or c5, you'll have to do something. Yeah. But black has not yet castled. Yeah, he's missing this one one important tempo. What else do we have? Wow, we, we, we have a Liam Pragnand game featuring this very special old, I mean, old in a sense that it, it, it was like fashionable five, six years ago, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit longer yeah pe people started to play this dc4 <clears throat> bishop d7 line in the catalan mm -hmm. and then after knight e5 bishop c6 takes takes is castles queen d7 ec rook d8 with the idea of of going e5 but it wasn't really working no it was like a queen c2 e5 they also played some knight d2 i believe <clears throat> Rochten had a game. I think he was uh, mm -hmm. playing one game in uh, FIDE World Cup where he, maybe it was in Baku 2015 or 2017, somewhere in Tbilisi. But Liam Lee, Lee played takes an F4, yeah? And uh, the computer could not be more unhappy about this choice. Yeah, this choice looks very strange. The black can go knight d3, right? Black probably should go knight this. It's yeah, very knight tempting. d3. He'll take what queen takes c4. And um, I know, maybe but I mean, also d5. bishop c5 is tempting already. Yeah, it's a dangerous position for white. Yeah, it's an unusual choice. Yeah, why did he weaken his position like this? Yeah, very strange because I do remember that somehow. I don't know if it was queen c2 or it was knight d2 at the beginning, but that after e5, people just took on c4 and then let the cd4 happen, and it, it was working out in white's favor, but... Uh... It, it also looks much safer and much more logical, yeah? Yeah. For instance, after e5, if you would just go queen takes c4, e d, e d, yeah? Well, why not? And also, we have like the weirdest chat ever accompanying the chess commentary. It's like, I don't know how we get this sort of clientele, yeah? But yesterday they were talking about geometry. And today they are talking about Gödel's uncertainty principle and uh, uh, and Euclid's fifth postulate. Uh, where do we get these people? <clears throat> wow. Wow. Sounds uh, very special. I like very educated people. I just uh, um, this is this is this is this is all you, yeah. I mean, I never had viewers like this. <laughs> well, I never knew who are the viewers, yeah, because Tanya is controlling the chat, and uh, 
and I was giving the lines, but basically well, what I'm seeing here from Liam, I'm a I'm little bit shocked yeah, that uh, weakening the structure like this. And uh, Tadeas was giving the info that in fact Rochten went knight d2 instead of f4 twice against Hovhannes in 2017 in Tbilisi. Mm -hmm. So yes, it uh, this this knight d2 was somehow in my in my mind, but I wasn't exactly sure when and how uh, this this was the case. Then we also have some developments in Shakri Amamadjel of Magnus Carlsen game. Well, that's the easiest way to prevent knight takes d5, right? By yeah, d takes c4. c4 yeah. Bishop c4 castles and then getting ready to play c5 quickly. Queen e2 mm -hmm. c5. Look at d1. And basically back has a very harmonious position. Nothing to worry about. And we have two crazy games, I would say. I mean, I even don't know which one to pick first. I mean, Anish Giri against Yashishtov Duda is a wild uh, Easty Nimtso with, with this fourth move C5. I believe Vincent has played it against Nihal Sarin in uh, Beal two years ago or something like this. It's a razor sharp line. Easty C5 knighted to D5, Easty Bishop A5 takes, takes. Bishop d2 castles. Yeah, black goes for this b6, inviting please go queen f3 if you want to collect my rook, feel free. But white declines this bishop c4 takes, castles knight this and queen c2 bishop this. And I believe that that game featured maybe rook ad1 instead of uh, rook fd1. So, so, something tells me like this, but rook fd1 is, is much more natural. Look, fd1 and then h5 happened. And uh, knight g4 on the board. What is your feeling? You have never seen, probably you have never seen really this line or, or have you seen it before? Uh, I mean, that game you referred to, um, I'm not sure. Um... It looks a bit weird, to be honest, to play h5 in that position, but it probably has some very concrete backing up, right? Yeah, it's very computerish position. Yeah, that. Uh... I don't okay, my my it's... feeling was always that it's a one game line. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was my feeling, uh, but uh, you never know nowadays. Yeah, people are working with computers. You can always get very deep into this kind of positions. I mean, if you have a one game line, you can always play that one game again couple of years later where well, people have forgotten yeah that's it but can i just take everything like i want to take on e4 mm -hmm. take on e4 take on d2 and play knight f6 trying to be very solid yeah but you are stuck with this weakness yeah queen c2 queen c2 queen b6 and then rook d8 i don't know how like the queen's five, gambit, yeah. You are having... Oh, or maybe even queen a5, yeah, and then rook d8. I mean, honestly, I'm not that terrified. Yeah, it's quite solid. Again, this knight versus the bishop, yeah, it's uh, tricky. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the fragment of the bishop, yeah, it might uh, end up passive and doing nothing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so okay, it's a very interesting position because there are too many theoretical games here. So interesting that how this game develops, but. Arjun, in the meantime, has started some really aggressive kingside march with h4, h5, getting his knight to e5, knight d2, knight dfc. However, the queens got traded off. Yeah, that, how did this happen? It's a London. Queen b6, queen b3. Wow, really like this? You can just waste... To Tempi to get the bishop to c6. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, this h4 started a5. It does nice for white, right? It looks nice, but yeah, now we ended up in some endgame. How do you, or you don't mind that it's an endgame? Well, I think if white is doing well, then maybe this will not make much of a difference that we don't have queens here. Well, maybe white can continue g4, g5. Or, you know, just play h6 at some point and insist that this square g7 will be missing. The famous missing square, yeah? Mm -hmm. 
But I mean, this G4, G5 is also very tempting, yeah, as, as you said. But for the moment, yeah, it's black to move. And knowing that white has all these ideas with G4, G5, and then who knows, maybe even G6 or somewhere H6, black probably feels like he needs to do something. Yeah, can we enter with the knight to E4 and then try to kick this knight away? Or how does this end up? I was wondering about knight takes C6. BC immediately yeah 95 mm -hmm. okay so you'll find this. it difficult okay i go look fc8 f3 f3 and you force me back to f6 mm. not nice <laughs> not nice at all <laughs> this is not that i'm expecting from a friend yeah oh my god yeah kicking the knight back to f6 i definitely wanted to keep that knight somehow more active and uh, Wesley opts for look fc8 yeah he wants to keep an eye on this bishop already Maybe also getting ready to hide it on e8. Yeah, but now maybe g4, g5 will come unobstructed, right? All right. So I feel I feel like you have the spirit of this position. Yeah, g4. All right. So okay, let me play bishop e8, Wesley. You are Arjun and Wesley. Let's g see how this game ends. G5. G5, knight e4. Can I be ambitious? Oh, well, now uh, you forced me to calculate, yeah, which is... Uh... Well, because now you are Arjun, yeah? We are playing a real game. It's uh, not, not commentary and not chatting. It's serious business. If G6, you want to go F6, right? And... Yeah, takes, takes, F6 would be my dream. Mm -hmm. And if I play like Bishop D3, what's your next move? Bishop D3? Well, I was hoping to, to be able to play F6, but can I? Okay, let's try. And these two uh, bishops. By the way, rook on c8 is very nicely protecting also the c5 pawn, just in case. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not so clear, yeah? Maybe not so. I mean, this rook fc8 was a lovely touch. When when I saw it happen, then, then I already understood. Yeah, Wesley wants bishop e8, knight moves, and then f6. But it is very dangerous, right? Like takes, takes, rook g1. I mean, so close to just being made. Bishop h6. Now, if I play bishop h6, you will just take that knight, right? And pray. And pray, yes. And eat, pray, love, yes. And... Yeah, I mean, okay, bishop h6 is already a draw if, if you want, but yes. and g4 if go... on the board. All right, all right. This is our game. It's, it's dangerous, yeah. It's not what Wesley wants. It's just, it's something he ended up with, right? Yeah, it's uh, no, not a dream scenario. Okay, one could argue that maybe black can also try to be super solid and go some knight d7, challenge this knight. Is that an option? I, I don't know which knight. Maybe knight f or knight b. This or this. Um, and then also g5 and g6. And... Okay, let, let, let's go knight fd7 first. On the board. You are you are really channeling him now, yeah? G five. Yeah, but I'm I'm not sure if my channels are also as successful as yours. <clears throat> yeah, G five. Okay, I have to take. That was the plan. Yeah, knight takes and knight C four, right? Uh knight C four, knight this. I actually was uh, planning to go mm -hmm. simply knight D seven. I mean, I don't... knight C four is too too complex. No, it's a little bit difficult to evaluate. Yeah, it's fine. No, I, I want to go knight d7 first. And if I go, let's say, knight g4. Yeah, g5 on the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you are just playing knight g4. But okay, I at least got rid of this monster knight so on e5. Well, as far as achievements go, this one is very temporary. <laughs> okay, I have some rook a5, bishop b5. Don't underestimate my position, please. Yeah, and we are seeing this. Knight takes d5, knight takes d5 on the board. Knight d7, rook a5, bishop b5. I want to see this plan. Finally, something good maybe what I'm suggesting. But after rook a5, I'll go bishop d3, bishop b5, bishop c2. I'm not sure you're happy with your rook on a5. I want bishop c4, rook b5, and uh, I don't know. <clears throat> Give me some hope. Please. 
No, I think I think you're playing very well. I'm just not sure your position is very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, my position is uh, I'm I'm heavily feeling myself under pressure. That's mm -hmm. my. I feel that I have to play good moves, but maybe they they aren't satisfactory already. And he was the other moment that you mentioned that maybe knight c4 a part of knight d7. Yeah, that that's but the other also, option. I understand your your hesitation to go knight c4 because it could be positionally troubling. Yeah, I, I wasn't so sure. Yeah, but uh, okay, cd4 played by Wesley. It wasn't my move at all. I wasn't yeah. sure that I want to clarify. The, okay, ed, and maybe then he wants knight c4, and then he gets more clarity. Would you be at all tempted to go c takes d4 now with white? Wow. I mean, okay, you guys are the d4 players. Yeah, I'm, I'm originally an e4 player. Uh, I don't know, because I, I thought that maybe even CD deserves attention. But of course, ED is the normal way to do this, right? Yeah, ED is it. But uh, you, you see that Arjun is taking his time. So, yeah, he, he opts for ED. Now, ED is definitely the more normal recapture. Yeah, and yeah, knight c4. Yeah, that already I, after CD, it was clear that West is counting on knight c4. Trying to be more forcing, yeah, because the knight on e5 is hanging and the pawn on b2 as well. And now what? Yeah. Yeah, that's the big question. You know what? After g6, you'll be fine, right? I mean, you eliminate the knight. You're not worried anymore. I mean, at least that's that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, because uh, if it would be unfair if even now uh, without the the knights, that would be still too dangerous. Mm -hmm. But okay, you have such a solid structure. Yeah, you, one one cannot. I mean, even yeah, g6. Well, g6, knight takes e5, bishop e5. Can still be a bit annoying. This, this bishop is stupid now. Yeah. It's horrible, this bishop. All right, but anyway, this is now a strategical ending. Let, let them work it out. What else do we have? I mean, in Prague's game, things happened exactly as we have foreseen. Yeah, f4, knight d3, queen c4, bishop c5. Knight c3, queen e7, king h4, short castle on the board. I mean, and and already Liam has to go pawn hunting because his position is terrible otherwise. Even, even after pawn hunting, it looks horrible. But Black, Black needs to, to prove this, right? Uh, how does he prove this best? Okay, I, I trust Prague. And he's also up on the clock. He has three minutes. He has just won a very important game. Uh, in the previous game against Liam, took the lead. I think his confidence level is absolutely back. I mean, there are so many options. I don't know. Also, simply Bishop takes his lead. Why, why can't I just take this pawn as well? If you already talk about pawn grabbing. I was not talking about pawn grabbing at all. No, I mean, I, I was, <laughs> I mentioned bishop takes b7, and then okay, yeah, you, you grab, I mean, white grab the pawn. Let's... If I take on e3, play rook f3. Ah, rook f3, that's, uh, that, that's a move, yeah. So I have to go queen d2 then. And then rook d1. Then knight f2. And then you have knight f2. This I yeah. don't have, yeah. I mean, knight f2 was the only thing that I saw. Honestly, I missed rook f3. Yeah, and black goes for bishop takes e3. I mean, okay, why not? Simple chess. Yeah, no, there was also some knight g4, but uh, but that was maybe more speculative. Yeah, then knight d5 and all this craziness, then knight on d3 is hanging. I, I did not want to go for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So Liam is in some kind of a prob trouble. I mean, I, I hate his position. This is just uh, too, too strange. And Magnus as well, creating some very nice prospects for, I mean, this is the dream scenario for any Queen's Gambit accepted or Queen's Indian players from black side? Yeah, I mean, that bishop should be on f1, yeah? It has no business on a2. It has absolutely no business on a2. Yeah, not at all. I mean, basically, this is the typical position how Magnus can simply win another game without any big efforts, I mean, with the black pieces. Ah, besides his last move, a6, a5, 
signals that maybe somewhere some bishop a6 tactic might also appear, yeah, because of the pin. Uh, in fact, knows? it might even be threatening now. Yeah, I don't know yet because you have this look takes d7, but mm -hmm. I mean, okay, white has to calculate and my Shakti I only has six minutes. I mean, this will be very awkward for him. Very awkward. And by the way, look at this. Uh, Duda is getting some real counterplay with the c5, c4. On the other hand, Anish has this monster knight on g5 forever targeting the h7 square. Yeah, the, the knight on f6 can can never really move. Black is dreaming of some knight e5, knight d3. Very sharp position. Yes, it's very difficult to even suggest natural moves here yeah, because the position is so unnatural. And... Yeah, it's... Uh... I mean, basically, one thing is easy to, to mention that usually h3 would be nice, but black is anyway not setting knight g4 because of this queen a7 checkmate idea. So then there is also no need for h3. But black is quite capable of playing maybe even g6, yeah, or rook d8, knight f8. I mean, this... At some point, this knight on f6 will get its freedom. Yeah, but g6 might run into knight takes e6. Yeah, it's... Uh... Or you are not worried of that? I was more talking hypothetically, you know? Yeah, yeah no, I, I like understand. Yeah. yeah, and I also... The, the reason why I selected black's piece is that black has a lot of dynamics, a lot of flexibility in his position. We, we do see the evaluation bar saying that maybe white has a chance to to at least I don't know I mean basically this doesn't give any advantage I mean this is not advantage yeah just some stability for white that there is no reason to worry about the position mm -hmm. but I mean if you give one more move for black 95 it's uh, not gonna be so easy for for white yeah 92 played. And computer is not that happy. I thought maybe white had, you know, like e4. At least uh, e4 would kill that bishop on a8. But on the other hand, it weakens all the dark squares. Yeah, then knight g4, bishop b6. That is true. Yeah, the dark squares are weak. And also, I'm no longer mating on h7. Yeah, which means I make this knight mobile. Exactly. Or yeah, it's, it's uh, not, not a good move. It's, it's a razor sharp position. Also, let's not f forget that Duda is leading the match. Yes, yeah? so uh, there is there is tons of pressure on Anish right now. And and this move ninety two shows me that he's not comfortable. I mean ninety two is much more of a defensive move than than a move that tries to stabilize some advantage. But I also understand, yeah, because there are so many pieces with some exchanges he would find it easier to, to use his structural advantages, maybe attack some pawns. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Okay, so we will keep an eye on it. What else do we have? So Arjun actually opted for this, uh, this g6 business, knight c4, g6, knight takes c5, and even took gh7. Yeah, it was another question, yeah, that what is this structure? Because... No matter what black does, there will be a weakness behind, left behind. Yeah, I was not sure it's necessary to take on h7 because I thought I can take later. Mm -hmm. But maybe he was worried that somehow this would run away from him. Yeah, look h8. Okay, so what does it signal as this move? Well, after h6, he probably wants to go f6, right? Yes, that, that's that's clear that h6, f6. But for example, if I just play something like king d2, getting ready for rook okay, g1. I mean, will we see this artificial castle link with, with king g8? And then uh, Wesley will say that, hello, this is Fisher random. Maybe he will, yeah, like king g8 now. Rook g1 and f6. And then f6 and then just reshuffle like this, yeah. Bishop retreats. Bishop e8. Okay, I have to double, yeah, somehow. I thought I have like bishop f7. Wow, you are really cementing. I mean, I'm the cemento, <laughs> but now you are also taking my cementing business, yeah? 
<laughs> I mean, okay, this is not not fair. But hang on, I have to punish. I mean, you you can't beat cementing. Okay, look at G two. That's my territory. Okay, let me break this cement. Yeah, and if I play rook h7, then you will... I will go bishop d3. Bishop d3, f5. Okay, I mean, giving me the e5 square, I, I don't know, I'm getting overexcited. h6 possible as well. Well, okay. just show me, yeah, rook h7. Wow, this is some pet Petrovich feeling, yeah, that you weaken the e5 square and you are still claiming that you might be okay. f5? Or you are not claiming that you are okay. Well, I'm just, I want to see how you break the cement, you see. Uh-huh. So now the pressure <laughs> is on me, yeah? Uh-huh. All right. Well, I'm even tempted for, for some action sacrifices, but no, that, that's just too much. And after bishop e5, you're going to play bishop f8? Yes. And I will claim that you will start losing some cement on h5. <laughs> <laughs> no, this I can give you it. No, 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 no. This cannot be true. So, okay, h6, you go g6, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. uh, and then I have some bishop e2, bishop h5 business. They can go king f8. You have good nerves, but look, take g6, I, I promised you some exchange sacrifice. Yeah, you will probably break the cement, right? Yeah, I mean, just to highlight the, the, the point, yeah, king f7 runs into bishop yeah. h5. No, nah, this was not, this was not, not the good cement, yeah? Are you yeah right okay, now? we are also very, very far. It was just funny. Uh, we, we have to get back to earth. Yeah, king d2, by the way, played. Bishop g5 check. So Wesley is trying to block with bishop h6, but then the rook on h8 will be a horrible piece. Um, it, It's a terrible position. I think it's just not a great position, yeah. yeah. I mean, you also showed incredible resilience. You tried <laughs> everything, but I mean, you, you were very impressive. But I only played the most simple moves, and and they still looked good enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let let Wesley suffer here. I mean, it's uh, he he won the first. No, it was a draw. The first game was a draw. Yeah, first game he barely survived. Yeah, yeah. He he. I mean, okay, it was this very interesting sharp game. Okay, Arjun getting some momentum. I mean, this is what we want to see. I mean, we want real fights and we want to see the, the extra the talent Arjun showing what he's capable of. F6, Wesley under pressure. I thought maybe now F6, White can go Rook DG1. I mean, Rook AG1, yeah? <laughs> Oh, AG. I know. I thought maybe we castled long. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. I understood. Yeah, it, it was so sweet. Yeah, you said, look, DG1. Yeah, it was clear <laughs> that you already castled long in your mind. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, okay. It's it's anyway just very bad. I, I can't even look at it. Uh, Liam, in my view, has survived the worst. Okay, he's pawned down, but he stabilized the position. All chances to hold this. I believe, but he's stealing the match, so it's a, it's a horrible scenario. And what about Magnus? Because Shakri are done to two minutes. I mean, please, with two minutes, defend this position. It's full of weaknesses. Everything is a weakness. Yeah, this knight coming to g3, also threatening the pawn on f4 is not great. Yeah, yeah this is this is horrible. I mean, soon we will be seeing Shakri are done to 30 seconds and... Uh, and then things will escalate. Uh, yeah, things will, will go downhill very quickly. Yeah, I just don't see any scenario that, strategically speaking, white can somehow stabilize. Because also just trading everything would be tempting, but it does not really help. Yeah, it's uh, the, the structure is so much compromised. We're not going to be able to... Yeah, maybe we just have one of those days where the world champion is in control. And... Yeah, in total control. Actually, this is Magnus's star. Yeah, he keeps on winning the matches and then there is no way stopping him. Yeah, it just becomes a routine. Yeah, like there, there is not, not enough, uh, not even a question if uh, Magnus is winning or not. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, in the first match, he showed some vulnerability against Wesley, where he was clearly losing in two of the four games. 
Um, but now, of course, he just he he looks completely invincible. So Shahriar looks like like he hates his life at the moment. Yeah, and look at this. Down to 30 seconds already, just as I mentioned. By the way, if somebody wants some incredible excitement, there is Anish Giri versus Yanshish Tovduda. Uh, but but here simply because Shakri is so low on the clock and Magnus is putting tremendous pressure, I, I would like to keep an eye on this. And then probably in the break, uh, if we have a chance, then we will take a closer look at all those crazy action there. Knight b3. I mean, you called it. You called it. This bishop has no business on a2. <laughs> this is hard. I mean, even if it would be on f1, it would be terrible right now. But I mean, uh, would be still much better than, than on a2. But Hannah's black play it, yeah. He can take everything and uh, sort of put a queen on b4, but probably he has something more convincing than that. Yeah, well, I mean, okay, at least knight b3 in a sense uh, is a is a clever move that it clarifies the situation a bit, yeah. It he's very low on the clock. Uh, it also doesn't seem to lose immediately, which I think is the most we could ask of that position. Yeah, that's that's I mean, okay, knight takes e6 was an option, yeah, just to trade, but uh, yeah, knight beast is more. It it has more soul, yeah. Somehow this move. There is some purpose. Okay, so the most tempting stuff would be to take on easily, but then at least white clad if yeah, Magnus takes. And what next? Well, normally you also take on d2, and yeah? now you started this taking action, you know. Exactly, yeah. Just. And then somehow to touch this f4 pawn, yeah, that that would be somehow to either threaten it somehow, maybe just take on d2, and then I thought somehow. Then maybe the even queen... include some knight before, yeah, just to open up the bishop, and then some queen move to to target the f4 pawn. Yeah, knight before looks up, but also rook takes d2 looks awkward for white to recapture, to be honest. Yeah, I thought that probably white should take with the knight. Um... And then here, I was actually mentioning here knight before. That that was my... Yeah, something my like this also. Queen. Yeah, knight before looks good. Yeah, when you do what bishop b1. And no because group. I want to open up the bishop. Yeah, that whenever you take on b6, I don't want that all my pieces are hanging. Because I'm counting on some queen f6, queen takes f4. Can't yeah. play hitting the knight on d2 as well. Yeah, knight b4 now and then maybe queen f6. I, it will still require some good moves, yeah? It's not automatic, I think. Yeah, and Magnus haven't taken yet. Yeah, he's taking his time. Three and a half minutes. And now we see Shakri at least uh, got 20 seconds extra, yeah? Thanks to Queen takes EC and Rook takes D2. Two easy moves. So Magnus probably senses that this is the golden opportunity, yeah. Because if he wins this game, then basically it's, it's curtains, yeah. I, I don't see that there is any way of uh, bouncing back against Magnus like that. But if it's only a draw, then there are still two more very very big games. And Queen C7 played. Wow. Well, attacking F4 was on the cards for a while now, right? But uh, Queen C7. I haven't spotted the move, honestly. Mm -hmm. No, we're trying to go queen f6, but then b6 is hanging, right? Uh, yeah. But the question is, uh, after, let's say, e5, then you claim the diagonal, right? You claim the diagonal, and also I think it's very important for Magnus that he did not want to let knight takes d2, because mm -hmm. then the bishop opens up as well. Very smart, and Wow, I mean, this is an aggressive move, but is it is it aggressive or weakening? I I would tend to believe it's more weakening. And again, he wants to bring his bishop to life. Yeah, understandable. Yeah, he takes f five. And now some some search for harmony, right? Queen g five. I don't know counterplay. Wow, queen g five. Yeah, interesting. I always had this feeling that you you always, you know, I have this very special feeling for counterplay. I mean, Queen G5 did not even cross my mind. And that's why whenever I played against you, I want it to be, you know, as solid as no counterplay, no <laughs> tricks, no jumps whatsoever. Yeah, EF, EF on the board. 
I know how dangerous you are. I just can't let that happen. I think I was at my most successful against people who underestimated me my whole life. Yeah, when somebody underestimated me, it was much easier for me to be successful. So your 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 strategy just paid off. Yeah, I just had tremendous respect. Yeah, I mean, okay, I, just leave me on the door. Just don't <laughs> let him to attack me at all. Not I. I will not give you a single dynamic move. And because we played so many games that I was uh, from the white side, that that of course helped me. Yeah, that that was the trick. Wow, but uh, how will Shakti? Uh, he's down to 19 seconds to survive this against Magnus. And this bishop is still logged out of the game on A2. I somehow want to play uh, like the knight. I want it back on F6 somehow. Consolidate, but um... but why not night before? Exactly that that was my kind of move. Yeah, I always wanted to go night before. And night B five. You wanna? Uh, do you want to take hook takes D two? Does that work? That works. Yeah. Right? Well, I mean, I yeah. Okay, rook D eight, queen D eight, bishop B one played. Okay, now the bishop opened up. Knight on B four is a monster. This knight might jump to G three as well. I mean, this looks like very favorable development for Magnus. That's a very nice position, yes. Yeah. I mean, this is a very big weakness. The king is a weakness. And of course, the, this pawn structure and this knight. Yeah, knight g3 jump on the board. Yeah, so knight g3, I thought white gets to play f6. Yeah, I wasn't sure I want to allow this. Counter play again. Yeah, f6 on the board. The bishop opens up. Queen takes f6 would be a horrible mistake due to queen a checkmate. So how to react? Yeah, because now for instance g6, you at least have to take into consideration some, some action, yeah? Bishop g6. Yeah, also some queen e7. Maybe I'm covering all the squares on anti-squares on the mm -hmm. d file. Gf6 taken by Magnus. Yeah, knight d4 blitzed out. Oh, this is for me like a loss of control. Yeah, I would have preferred with black not to allow f6 if possible. But yeah, you were calling knight f6. Yeah, yeah, just just as a stabilizer. I know your feeling, but okay. If Magnus will be in time to go queen d6, queen e5, uh, it's a big question. Can he? Because queen e8 is only a check. Yeah, the knight on g3 protects f5. That that could be crucial. Yeah, that if black has time to go queen d6, queen e5. On that the, could be important, yes. Yeah, on the board. Magnus also under a minute. Yeah, he doesn't have the comfort and the luxury anymore to, to, to spend a lot of time. He needs to speed up. But yeah, now for Shaq, very difficult with, with 10 seconds on the clock to... Maybe knight f5? Just to trade, yeah. This... But okay, takes take queen e5. Yeah, knight f5 played. Takes and then queen f2, queen f2, yeah? Queen f2 is a good uh, defensive move, yeah? And suddenly the knight on b4 can be a bit far from, from the action. Well, at least white is not, no longer strategically completely lost, yeah? So he gets some chances. He But he is pawned down. He's pawned down and he's still probably losing most of the endings, right? Yeah, queen f2, yeah, that, that's what we talked about. Knight d5, the knight joins the party. Yeah. And yeah, if knight takes d5, bishop d5, then the pawn on a4 will be vulnerable. Yeah, it's probably just just not good, yeah, whatever we yeah. do. Yeah. And this pawn is still very much alive on h4. I mean, for example, knight d5, bishop d5, and if the bishop moves, then black can just play queen g3 and nothing moves anymore. Yes. For example, yeah, just to highlight the dangers. Yeah, takes, takes. Shakri are under 10 seconds. We show this. Three. So if queen g3, then bishop f1. What, what is that endgame? But that endgame looks... 
Very suspicious with fixed G2 pawn and fixed A4 pawn. It's very close to losing, yeah. Yeah. But also it... black can go. Not everything, right? Because queen takes b6 is sometimes a possibility. Yeah, yeah. If if I get bishop f1, then mm -hmm. I mean it looks uh, terrible, but at least I'm freeing my queen. Yeah, I also think that Shahriar he actually he is putting up a very resilient fight. Incredible fight, yeah. I mean, it, it could have been so easy to collapse there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Down to 12 seconds. And Magnus goes bishop c6. Target well, here I thought queen takes b6 is possible. And queen e1 checked simply bishop f1? Yeah, I don't know what he wants. Maybe he wants to take bishop takes g2, but I didn't think that would be enough. Ah, but b3. But hang on, now this queen g3 looks even more effective. Yeah, b3 looks like a terrible move. Yeah, it's a panicky move. Yeah, with, with, played with three seconds on the clock, by the way. Yeah, just putting another pawn on the light square really will not help his cause. Yeah, bishop, queen g3, bishop f1, queen takes b3. And a4 pawn is falling. As well, queen e3 check. Wow, okay, queen, queen takes, takes h3, h3 will yeah, be this... also collected first. Yeah, I mean, the blundering queen takes h3 is really unnecessary. But Magnus, Magnus, does Magnus not... didn't see queen takes h3, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it just shows that there is a lot of tension. I mean, he could have <laughs> had this position with, without the h3 pawn. Oh, well, that's a rare one there for Magnus. Yeah, despite being very low on time. But okay, the queen on e is a monster. Yeah, it protects the b6 pawn. It covers the g5, g6 square, so there are no checks. Queen d8 check is only one check. King g7, and now the a pawn is threatened. Oh, queen g4 is a check. Yeah, okay, queen g4, queen c8. Yeah, that's true. King g7, queen g4. Okay, Magnus wants to get the 20 extra seconds. And yeah, that's the tick of the 10 seconds increment. Yeah, it looked like both players are down to just to their last seconds and suddenly they have both almost a minute. Yeah. That's why you also should never lose the objectivity every yeah, 10 seconds because then, then you can simply lose the game. Queen c7, king f6. By the way, maybe now it's also a chance to... To, to move to Prague, yeah, because look at this. What is happening? I mean, is Prague delivering a counterattack on against the White's king with look, look h2? Looks very likely, yes. Yeah, because this, this f6 pawn is not really threatening now that black got control. I also like queen f5 for some reason. I want to bring the queen into action. Yeah, even the, yeah, queen f5. There is no reason even to, to take this pawn. It's not mm -hmm. running away. It looks are overloaded. And uh, actually, Shakriya resigned after king f6 in that ending. So we can fully focus on this. Vasily is suddenly also Creating some counter play. Okay, what we keep an eye on this. This will be checkmate. Bishop c5 mm -hmm. resigns. Yes. Wow, what a reaction by plug. That's it. 2 0 plug. Keep on going if you already started again. Keep on. Don't don't hesitate. Wow. And it will be for Liam very, very tough battle now. Uphill battle to to I mean are you sure yesterday it's possible but yeah but, but Ragnaranda should not do this twice in a row right? exactly and he has been so impressive today I mean just keep on going just keep on doing what you what you are capable of uh, what about Anish Giri it will be a draw okay so all eyes now on uh, Wesley Arjun against Wesley what a turn of events Wesley's king escaped what happened where is that rook wow I remember why it had a rook. White had a look at some point, yeah, but uh, Wesley broke out and okay, luckily the bishop on c5 covers the f8 square, so it's not that easy to target the weak, weak pawn. I want to go rook e8 and then bishop e7. Yeah, but which look? 
Rook A. Rook A8, yeah, and then Bishop E7, yeah, that that would be. Okay, B6 played first. Bishop B4, B5. Yeah, Wesley just wants to make sure that White won't get any breaks with C4. But now White gets time to go like Bishop F5, Bishop G6, for instance. But look on, I mean, H5 is hanging. That is true, yeah. So I need to do it cleverly. Yeah, he first plays Rook G1 and then he is trying your Bishop F5. Yeah, because then Rook H5. After Rook E8, imagine. he will go Bishop F5, yes. Yeah. Wow, I mean, uh, this is a fight with 40 seconds and 50 seconds both sides. I mean, yeah, bishop f6, clever move. Not allowing the bishop to 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 move to g6. Yeah, the pawn on h5 is hanging immediately. Yeah, maybe Wesley is just planning to to maybe take on h5 one day. Yeah, just look h6, look h8, and then look h5. Yes. On the board. This is a risk-free approach, so to speak. But can, can we maybe try to break here with b3? I don't know he goes bishop c5. Maybe he I should have done something. Yeah, so I yeah. think h8, rook h5 will be unpleasant to play. Oh, yeah, because unfortunately, after rook h8, we, we can't play rook h1, then we will be pinned. Mm -hmm. Then black can play. Wow, he just goes g6. Also super smart. Opening the files. Computer agrees. g6 is, is lovely, yes. It's lovely, yeah. Solving all these problems, opening up the rooks, and then if if there will be two open files, then that should be it. Yeah, the problem is that the bishop on c5 is so much out of it. Yeah. It it belongs on e3, yeah. It belongs on, on that part of the pawn structure. And yeah, then white side. could claim actually full compensation. Yeah. Now beast, it's a little bit too late. I, I think one tempo too late. Uh, it's too little, too late, yes. Yeah. Like, can even go rook h2, probably, yeah, and start taking stuff on the second rank. Wow, that's actually, yeah. Okay, he can also take fur and then still have this rook h2 mm -hmm. in the pocket. Now, nah, this is not good, yeah. I mean, Arjun should have never lost this position. Yeah, he, he had all the chances to really. Torture Wesley for free. Yeah? It, it looked like a risk free advantage. Yeah, now, now, now probably this uh, rook to the second. Yeah. Yeah, rook h2, b takes a4, b a4, bishop d1, and then probably e3 or something like that. Well, or just uh, keep on doubling on the g. Or just keep on doubling, yes. Yeah. I mean, on the second rank. Yeah. The same applies to bishop d1. Yeah, now rook h2 or e3. I mean, they are all very tempting. Rook h2 played. King B3, yeah, he's trying to get the yeah, unfortunately, White's King is also in some kind of a mating net, so White had to play this terrible rook B1. But he he kept the rook, yeah. He kept the rook. He maybe kept I... the rook, but the pawn is marching, so bishop b5 has to be played. There is no other move, no? Bishop b5? How do you actually win? Yeah, Bishop b5, you play with bishop h4, right? And then... And then you play rook d2 and then e2, something like this. Yeah, somehow slowly, step by step, yeah. Bishop b5 on the board. And we are expecting bishop h4. That's okay. Let's even go. E2 e2. Looked vulnerable a bit. Rook e1. But okay, then... I mean both looks are protecting, yeah. Then bishop h4, rook fg2. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I also had the same feeling that okay, e2, maybe you can target it, but after all, we are protecting it with two rooks. A4. Bishop h4, yeah, it's uh vastly being very systematic. A5, rook, g2. I mean, white has a check. Well, he can even play e1, queen now. Uh, e1 is so much faster, yes. Yeah, e1, queen, and then rook e1, rook b2, check. And then the rook is falling. On the board. That's it. Yeah, that poor Arjun. Yeah, he had a chance. It is truly a bit heartbreaking for Arjun, right? And it should not be losing like this. Yeah, this is... 
This is too much because if you have no chance, it's one thing, yeah, but he really had a chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, resigns. So just a very quick recap because you ask what happened and we have missed that, that uh, moment. So king c2 f6, you, you actually called out rook a g1. Arjun then retreated with the bishop. And then, yeah, Wesley is doing this. I mean, he's doing what you have done, but in a in a very clever way now, yeah, that mm -hmm. uh, Arjun gave him the chance. Yeah, in a better version, clearly, yes. Yeah, somehow then uh, this is already kind of a rock-solid position. But still, I mean, okay, if white doesn't want to win, but probably white wants to win, that, that was the problem. Yeah, there is an interview, yeah, yeah. we can. Okay. Wesley, while the quality of play has been high, finally you did manage to convert it to a full point. Yeah. Feeling good? Yeah, f yeah, for sure. I've been waiting a long time for this. This is my first win in the <laughs> Meldwater Champions Chess Tour this year. So I'm very happy and excited. I mean, uh, all said and done, I probably should have won the first game and I probably shouldn't have won the second game. So it's all, it's all fair, it's all good. But I've been really looking forward to <laughs> my first victory. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, my level of play hasn't been exactly desirable. I see, I've always noticed this about you, that regardless of the result, you have a very positive outlook and are always looking yeah. forward to the next game. How do you manage to do that? Well, I love chess. I love playing. I've been a chess professional for eight years now. Uh, I've had good years and I've had bad years. And, and uh, you know, I'm used to losing. This is the life. I'm. 29 years old, you know, this is what I do. This is my job, I'm part of the game. I have everything I need in my life. And uh, I'm playing in chess career, not exactly for money, but to try to achieve things and to set goals in my life. And, you know, I have the full support of my family. And uh, yeah, I've been in this world for, for a long time, you know, chess world is small. I have friends, you know, it's nice to meet people like you and the traveling, that's why I like, playing over the board because I can see my opponent and it's I can see people. It's more fun than playing in your pajamas at home. But uh, I still have goals to accomplish, you know, like trying to increase my classical rating. But in general, I'm, you know, pretty happy with, with my life, pretty content. Leslie, you're way too humble and modest. You're coming from a big win in CGC as well. So you're very... Needed, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was much needed, totally unexpected. Uh, and uh, you know, you know, sometimes I win, sometimes lose. But I, I like working hard on my chess. You know, in between tournaments, I can put some hours when when I want to. We love seeing you in action. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Wesley. Yeah. Wow. So Wesley revealing the big secret that how do you manage to navigate through crisis, some difficult moments, simply to love the game. And uh, that's, that, that's, I think, wonderful to hear. It was also kind of shocking to hear that it was Wesley's very first win in this year's Madwater Champions Chess Tour. However, of course, this is the first event he is participating in. We do remember Wesley playing a brilliant tour last year. And we definitely have been missing him this year. It's very nice to have him. And of course, now at the cost of Arjun, he, he won his first game. And I think if Wesley starts winning, that's basically kind of a wrong moment to start facing him. Yeah, because whenever he gets the flow, then, then it feels like he might be unstoppable, just like at the global championship. So guys, watch out. Wesley is coming. And uh, great, great to see him back in the winning street. I mean, the winning path. About Arjun, I mean, uh, this this is really tough. Yeah, it's it's the third match today. He has lost two. He keeps on playing from one one thirty a.m., which means that by now he's already at three thirty a.m. And then after such a disappointing loss, yeah, because he was clearly putting the pressure. It was all about Wesley defending and then suddenly using his chance. We even haven't seen, it still looks better for White. What happened here? 
Uh, I'm I'm actually really curious. So king d2, rook d8, rook e3, bishop e8, rook h1, bishop f7, shuffling, shuffling the pieces. I mean, okay, both sides have one uh, big weakness, e6 pawn and the h5 pawn. Bishop d1, rook a8, bishop e2, king d7. And at some point, some e5 happened. I want to see how did that ever occurred. King c1, I mean, who is playing for, for a win? Ah, but already also this king, I mean, the king was well placed on d2. I mean, Rustam, please join in if, if you have something to say. Yeah, I just don't the... understand, yeah, why the king went to a2. Um, I mean, I don't almost... understand at all anything because I don't know who is playing for what right now. I th I think White was sort of trying, uh, but the king has no business on a2, right? Ah, and then bishop c7. Yeah, I, I also believe that White is still the one who is... Because, okay, it's a fixed pawn, yeah, on e6. Mm -hmm. King d7. And this is the moment when suddenly I saw it and I felt like... If there is no way for white to win immediately, then this is a big turning point. White would love to sacrifice the exchange with d takes e5, but actually it runs into d4 check. That's uh, that's a very big problem. Oh, that's why you shouldn't have your king on a2. <laughs> yeah, king on a2. Yeah. And, and e5 with little time on the clock, maybe even objectively, suddenly it, it all falls apart. Yeah, look fc. This is clearly not going to work out in white's favor. The rook is trapped. And yeah, this is the moment when we joined in. Takes, takes, and it, it already looked bad. And then could, Wesley could, went on to could convert. Could he take another bishop? Like, take on f6 instead of... Um, instead uh, of here, rook f6, yeah? Rook f6 takes uh, bishop e7. I thought maybe white has a chance to... Okay, but black has rook h6 and then rook g1, yeah? And then rook g1. But uh... rook g1, rook g8... And I get a passed pawn, but it will not do very much, right? Yeah, anyway, okay. But the, the games are about to, to start. We have no time to, to speculate. It's certainly a very, very unfortunate loss for, for Arjun. It was completely unnecessary. The same uh, the same situation uh, is Shakri Amamadyalov, yeah? That, okay, not the same. He lost both games, so Magnus actually needs only a win with the white pieces to secure match victory. I mean, sometimes under such circumstances, Magnus is very cynical. Yeah, he might be playing e4 and uh, yeah, e4 on the board. What do you do? How do you try to do anything against Magnus after e4? Honestly, I think this is probably just going to be a short draw. Yeah, I don't think Shahriar thinks that there is a world where you can beat Magnus twice on demand. Yeah, well, also, how do you create chances? Yeah, and uh, wow, it is. Uh, a very strange moment, yeah, that Magnus is there, he plays e4, but his opponent is not yet. Yeah, Shakti, mm -hmm. I just arrived. Yeah, e4, c5, it's going to be a fight. That's it. No short draw. Shakti, I says, okay, no matter, it's better that I lose, but I want to try. So, but, but even after, yeah, he has to play e6 and he wants to play this uh, two knights uh, Sveshnikov move order, probably. Uh, oh. By the by the way, uh, um, can we uh, talk about the financial conditions a bit? Uh, yeah, we, we should even. We should definitely. We, we probably should, yeah, because we know that the winner of every match gets seven and a half thousand dollars. Exactly. Which, if you ask me, is uh, is a lot of money for winning a rapid match. Definitely. And the winner in uh, in Blitz gets. 5,000, right? 5,000 and the loser gets two and a half. So basically, actually, Anish has so far collected the twice the 5,000, but also giving his opponents uh, twice the two and a half thousand. Yeah, so he's uh, very, very polite, very correct. But my uh, uh, my my other question, uh, the more pertinent question to me is, uh, if you actually lose, uh, like for instance, Arjun lost two matches, did he work for free these two days? Well, the situation is this, that there was the Senna, wow, actually C4, G5, uh, spectacular stuff, but let me answer you. There, there was this uh, Crypto Cup in uh, Miami where, where uh, Hans Niemann lost all the matches. Mm -hmm. All of them were hard fought. Yeah, it was always very tense, but 
finally ended up losing all the matches and we were thinking like wow does he does he get then then zero money yeah while the other guys cashed in but i think it's in the regulation it's in the in the contract that everyone who participates in a major tournament has a guaranteed five thousand dollars yeah so even if you don't win any prize money so called you are guaranteed five thousand that's that's how i remember the regulations mm -hmm. which which i feel uh, very correct yeah because okay of course anyone who participates in a major event uh, should have a guarantee uh yes no this is this is of course of course very nice yeah on the other hand uh, if you are ever claiming this guarantee then you probably did awfully badly in the tournament. yeah then <laughs> then I'm not sure that this can satisfy you yeah at least okay it will ease a bit on on your pain but uh, yeah that's it <clears throat> that's it and and let's also not forget how arjun got here yeah that he in the julius bear generation cup yeah he he got into the final mm -hmm. and uh, thanks to this he qualified to to the major yeah so uh, the only wildcard player is vasti so in the field everyone else has qualified through the champions chess tour criteria to this last final major Wow. The only reason why I'm not a believer in all these things is that Magnus himself started toying in all kinds of blitz events. Yeah, with even E4, G5, and there was this uh, scandalous situation where Rauf Mamadov just resigned after E4, G5, boycotting that, no, no, I, I'm not going to play a game like this. <clears throat> Let's be serious. And if anyone knows how to handle it, yeah, I can imagine a knight going to H5 or a pawn H4, breaking this pawn on G5. I think there was also some tweet by Anish or, or interview or some, some quote that, well, if my opponent goes E4, G5, instead of panicking, I will just crush him with D4 and then quickly H4 and, and mm -hmm. game over. Yeah, no, this does not look like a playable position to me. Yeah, wow. I mean, what kind of Marozzi are we talking about, yeah? That's, well, that's, yeah, that's one hell of a Marozzi or, you know, the best hedgehog in the world. I mean, you can... We can treat it any way you like, basically. Yeah, yeah this also the knight on, of, of course, yeah, knight has to go to e7 if you play g5, but I mean, knight g6, yeah, you okay. Yeah, Shakriya goes g takes h4, he, he can't afford the weakness on g5, but, but this is horrible. Wow, by the way, we have tons of action. Vastly so against Arjun Aigaishi. I mean, okay, here Magnus in total control. We believe in, in Magnus. But what on earth is happening in this game? Do you know this? No. No, yeah? There is some Slav, because it did happen from the Slav, that Rustam Kasimjanov doesn't know. Ladies and gentlemen, this is breaking <laughs> news. This is breaking news. Easily Bishop F5. And what? Vastly is leading in the match. And instead of knight cc and then going knight h4 and enjoying life, he goes knight h4 voluntarily. What is this? Arjun takes on b1, takes, goes for e5. D takes e5, bishop b4, king e2, knight e4. I would be, you know, like in ecstasy that, wow, what, what a counter play and we, we're going to see a big match. Arjun bouncing back, but then I look at the evolution bar and and then computer doesn't believe. Right, just like g3 castles bishop g2 and then queen c2 rook d1, it looks like black is positionally lost and a pawn down too. Yeah, just to highlight this, bishop g2, yeah, and then queen c2 rook d1. We already yesterday have seen it from Magnus, yeah, that he got with his, I mean, also he captured with the, no, here he didn't capture anything, pardon me, but he did capture that on e2 mm -hmm. with the king. And, and then, also against Arjun, yes. Also against Arjun, yeah. <laughs> this is, yeah, castles on the board. Doesn't look good for black, yeah. But then what happened? What, what, what on earth had happened? Ah, it just bad. Yeah, no, this is just bad. Yeah, no, E5 was probably this sort of reflex of sorts, yeah. This is a reaction of a very... Well, it's a tilt, right? I mean, what else do you say, yeah? Yeah, it, it feels like, yeah, because or something that after e5, there is some very special, ah, okay, so e5, d takes e5, and probably it was more precise to start with knight e4. 
Ah, because because knight e4 g3, you can go queen a5 check. Queen a5 check, yeah, that that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Different. You have to you have to have this op option of of the queen a5 check, and then take on a2, and that's a whole different animal, of course. Yeah. Yeah, because there there are all kinds of forms. Mm -hmm. Hanging in the air. Wow. So then e5, d5, bishop, b4. Yeah, this is what happens if if you had lost, uh, you have lost two games in a row, and especially the last one, you no, he didn't lose two. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, he lost. Game, he lost one. Yeah. Yeah, he lost one. First game was uh, was a draw, but on the other hand, if he loses this, then it's it's curtains. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean I, I understand your point because he lost just one game, but he will feel like he lost three. Exactly. It hurts so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This previous game. No, but also having this history of having lost yesterday and the day before yesterday is not great, no? Yeah, it's adding to to the pressure. Yeah, it's uh, you. You talked about the the prize money and everything. Yeah, it's for every major. There is two hundred ten thousand dollars on the line. Yeah, it's it's really fantastic. And uh, then you probably hope before the event that, okay, I'm playing a fantastic event where I'm going to learn a lot, yeah, automatically because I'm entitled to play seven matches against uh, seven uh, brilliant opponents. And at the same time, I have great chances to earn also hell of a lot of money, yeah? There is this hope before the event. And then suddenly you keep on losing match after match. I think this is also one of the reasons why it's so difficult then to, to keep your calm, yeah? Because... You were expect you were hoping for something much more, much better. Yeah, no, this is exactly uh, this is also the uh, the reason I I asked that question is, uh, whilst obviously their financial conditions are very very good, it is also very very possible to to work very hard. And yet, you know, to have to claim this uh, five thousand guarantee at the end of the tournament. In which case you will feel that you know maybe your work wasn't as well paid as uh, as you thought would be normal, you know, in a tournament like this. Yeah, of course. On the other hand, you were given the chance to to earn jackpot. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Of course. Yeah. It's, it's basically your own fault, but uh, but of course, yeah, it's it's a terrible feeling. I perfectly. We were also speculating in during the FTX uh, crypto cup, yeah, that it should be very unfortunate and and so on. Uh, okay, Arjun tries queen c8. Yeah, he's hinting at, for example, cd, cd, queen d5 can be met by queen c2 check. Yeah, that's uh, that, that would be a terrible blunder from from white side. So the game is not yet over, but Magnus is, wow, what? It's finished, yeah? Yeah, Shakri Amamadyalov already resigns. What happened? Okay, it looked horrible. Magnus drinking his water. Finishing the match 3-0. Well, I mean, we knew that it's bad, but that it will end so quickly. We, we're going to hear an interview probably from Magnus. Ah, Queen E5, F4, and he just lost the piece. Yeah, but okay. I mean, having a, a really horrible position from the opening does not help your winning Yeah, chances. Magnus in the interview. Product of the match situation, G5? Yeah, I think actually g5 is a decent move in a lot of uh, situations. Like, for instance, after knight c6, if knight c3, then you can play g5 quite reasonably. But when you don't have time to prevent d4, then that's just a lot worse. At the start of the day, you said this match could go either way. Were you expecting it to get over in just three games? No, I wasn't expecting that, but uh, it's always one possible outcome that you get ahead from the start and then things uh, flow quite quite smoothly. So uh, I haven't had, I feel like, too much of, uh, sorry, too many of those matches recently. So I was yeah, happy to get one of those. Uh, is the reason also because of uh, Shark's chaotic, aggressive style that these kind of results can happen? Uh, yeah, but uh, I think anybody would would struggle if I'm if I win the first game and I'm feeling okay. Fair enough. All right. Well, uh, early evening for you. What's the plan to uh, take some rest? Yeah, we'll we'll see. Um, I, I got a few extra hours now. I mean, um, probably uh, it's still sun outside, so I'll try to to do that. Um, usually, when uh, the games finish, it's almost dark, so. That would be nice. Enjoy the evening. Thank you. Wow. I mean, that was quick. That was fast. Magnus Carlsen beat Shakhtar Mamayev 3-0. And uh, yeah, basically at the end of the day, 
Shakri, I think, simply did not believe in this third game. That he he did try something, but with, without any belief. Yeah, I mean, this is this is one of the things. Yeah, a lot of people they freak out in a must win situation, uh, but in fact, uh, having a really bad position does not add to your winning chances. In fact, in fact, it makes the task of of a guy who needs to draw just so much easier, right? Yeah, I mean, the, there is no this uh, nervous tension. Yeah, that the game continues, and then mm -hmm. should I play for a draw? Or I have to. Uh, should I take this? Yeah, your opponent already took the risk for took the decision for you, and you mm -hmm. can just focus on the game. But uh, we also see here some spectacular stuff between Yashishtov Duda and Anish Giri. A peace sacrifice is coming. Uh, Black King in the center also whites, but it looks like it might be very dangerous for Black. Yeah, we 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 see that uh, that Duda does not shy away from sacrificing a piece at any moment, right? Just any sacrifice, any time. Yeah, very happy to to do that. He's also leading the match. Yeah, so he feels like if he can he can win this game, then then it's also match over. Yeah, but uh, on the other hand, I believe we have to also back back down and take a look how did this happen. It's another uh, Ragozin. So it's a thematic match. This is what Anish is, uh, Anish's strategy is during the tournament, as far as I understand. Yeah, that he always keeps on repeating uh, the opening that he has played in the first game. Knight BD7, Rook C1. This is some old stuff. Yeah, you you might be familiar with this from mm -hmm. ten years or fifteen years ago. Yeah, Rook C1 is one of those non-committal moves. Yeah, much like Knight D2 or so. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we, we have to speed up because we see some action here. Takes, takes, knight b6. Yeah, black is doing some strange things, but at the same time, yeah, we, we know exactly that this h5, h4 is always in the air when you have this knight e4, bishop g3 combo. Is the h5, and then Duda going c4. h4, bishop e5, f6, takes on d5, f5, and bishop b5, check. I think this bishop b5 check is very nice from white side because it forces black to make a decision. And the move king f8, which played by Anish, doesn't get the computer's approval. Knight takes e5 on the board. Buffet, if I read this uh, this thing correctly, neither is uh, queen neither, neither is knight takes e5 favored by the machine. Which makes but it me looks wonder. so tempting, no? It looks so normal to take knight takes e5. And it looks good enough, humanly speaking, at least. Oh, maybe now I, uh, I mean, black can play king g7, and uh, white definitely has a lot of compensation. But I mean, king g7, then can I touch this knight on e4? I mean, even queen c2 with double attack on c7 on e4? Yeah, you can definitely do that, yes. Yeah, yeah. This, I mean, to, to be honest, after knight takes e5, I'm not exactly sure how black should react. Maybe, maybe knight d6. Knight d6, or can you include some queen f6 threatening mate? But what does it really help? Because c7 will be vulnerable. Well, queen f6, f3. Yeah, doesn't seem to. I mean, if c7 falls and white looks, I mean, white look gets to the seven, that should should be it. No, I, I think Anish is in a lot of trouble. But I know, like, if I play knight d6, will you really take that rook? Okay, let's put this knight. Uh, to be honest, I wanted to kick you away with FC. That's why I'm kind of uh, happy that you retreated yourself. Maybe I'm just coming back with the bishop to d3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's not so easy. Yeah, I'm I'm not famous for sacrificing, but but the, this one I would take. Yeah. Yeah, this, of course you'll take this one. Yeah. And any day, it's strategically so healthy. I mean, we even did not talk about some castles F4 business. And queen takes d5 in the starting position? Yeah, I mean, uh, it was kind of my main move, but I mean, I was thinking that finally, end of the day, who knows, maybe I can then just collect and c7 is falling. How but much is c7 will fall? Hang on, I can even take with the rook on c7 immediately. Also tempting. Just, I I love this knight on e5 so much. 
what happens if we just take um queen takes b3 a b3 and rook h6 for instance aha uh -huh. rook h6 you are being creative yeah well, I'm just trying not to blunder an IG6 check. <laughs> yes, it wasn't, <laughs> but it wasn't. So it's bishop f5, rook f7 check. Yeah, this is... Uh... No, but I love this commentary. I mean, commentary with you brings me back all these memories from, from our training camps and everything. We had so much fun. And that's how I feel, you know, that chess players should work on chess. And it's very hard work, but at the same time, you have to have the pleasure. Yeah, that's how also all this Samanto, Blokatovic, Smartovic, you know, all this Desperado kind of words uh, got... Uh, uh, it's part of part of preparation. Yeah, you have to have this spirit. Yeah, you have to... You know, you can't be always very serious because, okay, if you work for eight, ten hours a day for, for many, many weeks, then then you need some something to inspire you. It's also very... I think it's just psychologically very good training when you are enjoying it it just it will be more useful it's not only more pleasant but i think it will also be more useful yeah and i think it's also one of the key moments yeah when you are selecting a, a trainer or you are selecting a second yeah that you you need persons with whom you feel very comfortable who who also personally give you a lot yeah because if it's only about chess then then it's very difficult yeah but uh this this chemistry between the player and and the coach or second or how you want to call him mentor is is crucial yeah now my experiences throughout my career have generally been good it's pleasant to work on chess in good company it's just it's a nice thing i think this was also the the big secret of vicious teams yeah that they always had lovely atmosphere and uh, everybody enjoyed so much and Vichy himself loves to work so much that it also adds, you know, that it's always nice for, for the second if you feel that your player is so much involved. Yeah, it's not like, okay, you guys work, work, work after you tell me the final result and I'm trying to save as much energy as possible. Vichy was always basically working the same 10 hours like his team, yeah? All, all Espe day. Especially 2008. Uh, 2008 when preparing for this match against Kramnik and Bonn I mean, I, I've never before or after encountered a player who was just so unbelievably motivated to work like Vichy was in 2008 it was just he was uh, it was just even physiologically stunning because he was not sleeping 8 hours a day uh, he was also working out physically he was uh, basically spending I don't know maybe 15, 16 hours a day in front of the computer. I just don't understand how this is physiologically possible, you know. Well, I can't, you know, reveal a secret that Kamik was doing the same. Yeah, I was also like uh, shocked, you know, that how is it possible? Yeah, that you, usually I feel that if you are a second, you have the right to complain if you are working nonstop and your player is, for example, just uh, enjoying life and, and whatsoever, mm -hmm. then you might say that, okay, but maybe six, seven, eight hours are enough. Yeah, but if your player is working 10, 12, 14 hours a day, then you have to keep on. Yeah, it's uh, there is no way you can uh, say anytime stop or something. Ah, this is very impressive. Um, it was much more impressive than Arjun's position. Yeah, it is really nothing to <laughs> not, nothing to be happy about. Yeah, this is. Uh, I mean, I I think we we won't even lose too much words on it because it, there is nothing to. To, to awful, say yeah. it's completely lost and the match will be lost and we hope that uh, Arjun will recover for tomorrow because okay there are no miracles here this is definitely not and then we have to move on to, to Prague's game Prague is leading the match uh, at the same time Liam is trying to create unbalanced position but okay unbalanced however well very successfully in this game right I mean he did reach an unbalanced position but it, it all depends if there is any immediate tactic, yeah? Because if uh, Black stabilizes this this kind of uh, construction with eventually E4 will be very dangerous for White. I don't think there is, I don't think there is anything tactical. Nothing tactical, yeah? All this Rook D7, Queen D7, Knight D5 is, is just nothing, yeah? Well, then Queen C7. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's just show that. Yeah, Rook D7, Queen D7, Knight D5, Queen C7. 
hitting the knight. Yeah, so queen c7 is a very safe square, right? Yeah, and, and look at this. Yeah, that uh, Prague has played the move rook d2 and immediately evaluation dropped. Because yeah, if if there was nothing at the momentum, then then we really believe in black's position. I thought maybe he had to go queen e three instead of rook d two. Queen e three, yeah, to keep an eye on the knight, not allowing yeah. e four to prevent e four, yeah. And now maybe he's threatening rook d seven and knight takes e five. Exactly. Um, but rook c seven, so that's it. Liam gives chances, yeah. Then maybe White can still correct himself with. Why not e4? Are we missing? Are we blind? Are we missing something? I mean, e4 resolving this tension looks so so natural. e4 look look natural. I, I mean, rook c7. Just... I understand. Yeah, he defends the knight on on d7 for all purposes. But in fact, after queen e3 again, he has, I think, a difficulty in finding a move. Exactly. Everything is loose somehow. Yeah. This. Uh, oops. I mean, I wanted to highlight that. Everything is vulnerable in Black's position. Yeah. How do you even make? I mean, what's your next move? I don't. I don't see it. Yeah, because without e4, I mean, maybe eventually I will have to take on f3. But uh, I, it was not part of the main plan to give up this bishop. Mm -hmm. Look, ed1 played. Plug keeps on pressing this knight on d7. Wow, okay. We, we will come. By the way, plug is done to five minutes, but the, the big news is that Anish, after spending I don't know how much time, he did play the move King G7, which we thought that it might be a blunder due to Queen C2 double attack. I'm trying to figure out uh, what Anish has in mind, or is he in panic, panic mode already? Queen C2, Queen takes D5. Yeah, Queen C7, check. King F6. Wow, this is like Levon Aronian in Buckhouse. Yeah, he was. I was asking, What are you doing, Levon? You are getting checkmate, you are running into it. And he said, Yeah, you have to run into it. That's the only way to survive. <laughs> I mean, I know you, you guys are the big Buckhouse fans. You know how I'm playing. I'm trying to, first of all, I said, No mate. Yeah, please, no mate, because then you just checkmate me in 10 moves. It makes no sense. And let me try to, you know, double, triple defend. Uh, but even this does not really work for me. Yeah, double defense doesn't work, no. Doesn't, do, yeah. But I enjoy, you know, put all the pawns there. You, but always some HD, H6 uh, things are coming and break, breaking my construction. Uh, King G7. Okay, yeah, maybe King F6. Maybe you can run away. But somehow I, I don't believe that against Duda. Again, means that the king f6, white can just castle short and then try to play f3 or f4. Um, but this looks messy to me, to be honest. Messy, yeah. You're gonna go bishop e6, yeah, and then trying to but bishop e6, f3, and then uh, or immediately f3, yeah, as we're told, yeah. Yeah, king f6, immediately f3 is, is very strong, but okay, this is not, not trivial, yeah, that you have to. I mean, knight d6 and then exactly knight d6 and then some rook c5 or or rook c5 knight takes b5 but now i'm also getting a bit confused exactly it isn't so simple oh that's that's, that's oh, nasty oh, yeah oh my god yeah again already yesterday stalemate rook b5 and now rook <laughs> takes b5 wow yes Beautiful, yeah. Queen b5 runs into queen f7 checkmate. So, yeah, there are all kinds of dangers. I mean, okay, queen c2 is so tempting. No, Duda goes bishop d3. I mean, okay, but the position is so good for white, no matter what you do. And probably, um, Yashistov thought, like, okay, I have everything under control. This queen c2, queen takes c7 is too forcing, and maybe I don't need it. Just simple chess, and okay, it's a massacre. This is a massacre. G4. But how, how things are happening? I mean, we, we talked about this before the match. Anish is extremely solid, rock solid. But it's all connected that Duda managed to beat him in the very first game. Yeah, and after that, then Anish was in uh, in a must, not must win, but he wanted to mix things up. And uh, he backfired heavily. 
Hang on, and now I, I, I really lost control. So what is the score in this match? It's well, one and, one and half, a half, right? half for Duda, I think. One and a half, half. So yeah, because that was this bug was in ending that Duda converted in the first game, and then second game was a draw. And if he wins this game, then he seals the match. Yeah. No, I think I was confused because I think the second game we more or less somehow missed, yeah, in its entirety. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, there was just way too much action mm -hmm. at, at that point. And okay, but if you have to play G, it's it's not an attacking move, it's a defensive move. Yeah, trying to somehow um, grab. I don't know. I'm, I even don't know what, what kind of purpose is this pawn doing on G4. I mean, clearly Five. black does not want to go G3 because then even white can just play H3 also, but push everything. I think maybe it, maybe it frees the square G5 for the queen somewhere. Yeah, but C7 is hanging, yeah? It is, yeah. But okay, I mean, it's yeah, not and a nothing great moves. position. Yeah, yeah, bishop is on C8 stack, has nowhere to go. Yeah, because bishop F5 even runs into takes, takes queen C2, double attack again. But even maybe something else. No, this is this is hopelessly lost. What else do we have? Okay, Arjun did manage to give a check, but uh, White has two pieces. I mean, this is just a check and the pressure on G7. This is hopelessly lost. Nothing to talk about. And all lies then right now on Prague versus Liam. And, and now also it looks very nice for White. B6 pawn is very weak. So in fact, after look ED1, E4, to understand how we reach that position, takes, takes, Queen E3. Again, the move Queen E3, maybe this was missed by, and mm -hmm. we talked about it, that suddenly after look C7, Black's construction is loose. Prague uses it immediately, Knight E6, Knight D4, and this is now, of course, very nice trade, takes, takes. Black is sacrificing the pawn on B6. He had nothing else to do and hope to create some counterplay. In B6, F4. Um... I'm even tempted not to let the maybe just Knight E2. Yeah, and uh, okay, what's what's happening? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. It's a pawn. Yeah, let's take. Oh, you you want to? Okay, okay. You want to Maybe take it? F4, Rook D6. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Rook C7 to E7. I was saying that this Rook on C7 is loose anyway. Yeah, I don't know if I if I improve my position with this trick. Yeah, knight e2. Yeah, but you see, Prague is following my suggestion. He goes knight e2. No, no crazy business. I mean, he's leading the match. Strategically, everything is fine. The b6 pawn is not really running away. Rook d6 is uh, threatened. Queen d5 can be met with f4. Lovely f4. Yeah, no, just, he's keeping control. That's very nice. Yeah. Yeah, just to highlight that that is this. Queen and basically queen e5 f4 puts an end to the game so what to do yeah that's it liam has to go all in rook f7 and even now i'm not sure that i'm gonna take this pawn or you want well i would try to calculate something uh take a four knight d4 for instance but then you have knight g5 yeah yeah, then we create some mess, at least. Mm -hmm. Hoping for some control. I, I don't think that Prague wants to give any counter play. But on the other hand, how do we stop? Yeah, because knight f4 then takes take g5 and black anyway gets some play. Yeah, knight f4 played, okay. So I'm expecting knight takes f4, queen f4, g5, and then maybe just Queen d6 or queen e3 back? Yes, maybe queen e3 back, f4, queen takes b6. Finally, you are happy, yeah? You are collecting this pawn. e3, rook d8, and... Uh... Yeah, that's it. It's so important that the knight from e6 has, has vanished, yeah. yeah. And after rook d8, I think white will just win, yeah? Yeah. I mean, this is the way for, for Prague. I mean, this is his chess. Forget about draws, forget about holding your keeping your lead in the match, just play what you are so good at, keep on. And he's not making the same mistake as yesterday. 
by the hang on we have to we have to look at this we have to just, have you ever seen this construction i have never seen it it's a very central construction and then uh, the bishop on c8 can't be developed yeah basically we'll have to sacrifice it or something you know there is a there is a good chance yeah that this day could be over don't after. don't <laughs> don't see it you should never i mean you don't know it we already <laughs> we already had this kind of moments with tanya we thought like okay at least one time a little bit shorter day because also for commentators yeah working from nine in the evening till 2 a.m every single day uh at some point our batteries might also just die out but i mean all these hopes that maybe we get punished no no deep inside you can hope for it but but don't jinx it <laughs> Uh, because oh to, be, to, 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 to be fair, this position still looks messy to me. This this Duda's position does not look completely winning to me. Yeah, it's a very strange kind of structure. Yeah, you can get too euphoric that, wow, I have everything under control, but you are peace done after all. Yes. And it's enough to blunder something. Yeah, if you blunder the pawn on e4, pawn on d4, suddenly everything will change. Yeah, just... Yeah, Just one and thing. also also it's not like both players have like eight minutes on the clock. Yeah, they are both under some time pressure yeah, under even four if minutes so that goes like bishop takes f5 ef rook ac8 for instance with this pawn on g3 and the back rank suddenly it looks like um you know there will be there will be blood yeah look i mean uh, i really believe also that black's best is to to sacrifice the the bishop on f5 but anish actually goes queen d2 which like he's attacking the pawn on d4. Okay, yeah. he's attacking the pawn. Yeah, he's disturbing. Computer does not like it, but uh, it's understandable. Mm -hmm. But hang on, knight f3, if this knight just retreats. Knight f3 looks like a very good move, yeah. I mean, just to, to stabilize everything. Queen e2. Queen e2, you keep on harassing. Yeah, but then bishop, ah, bishop d3, queen e3, check. Uh huh. Be careful. Yeah, this is. I have knight takes h4. Ho ho, the queen is. Ah, but mm -hmm. do, do that move queen f3. That's the. I also too late understood that. Yeah, if the queen comes, it's checkmate. That's it. Queen d4, check. King h1, king h1 yeah. queen e5, check. Forcing the king. We have already seen this motif today mm -hmm. in uh, Vastly against Arjun game. If White would have played rook f1 and mm -hmm. then this h2 check that we, we discussed. So queen fc, Duda does not miss his chance. And it seems that it's all over. Ah, queen f3 is very nice. Yeah. yeah, and Anish has blundered this queen. I mean, look at uh, his, his body language signals that he, he completely missed it. Yeah, I, I, I was... Trying to go bishop f5, but yeah, yeah, we talked it about in. it that black has to sacrifice this bishop as quickly as possible, yeah, and then open up the rook. You very nicely highlighted that with the pawn on gc and eventually some action on the c file, it might be objectively bad, but in a practical game, there are some chances. Uh, but however, this is just curtains, yeah. Black might have to play queen g5 back, yeah, which is a super sad move. I mean, no, finally bishop f5, but it's just too late. He takes f5, queen d4, check king h1, and still you can't take the knight for the same reason, because of queen g4, rook a c8 played. Is rook g7 forced mate? Yeah. Wow, beautiful, yeah, rook g7 check. King g7, f6, and then even bishop h7, check, yeah? What? Yeah, bishop h7, this is a forced mate, yeah. But uh, but king h6, I was not sure. Yeah, just, just to show this quickly for our audience, that there are all kinds of sacrifices. Yeah, this, this is the moment when white might be able to play for the galleys. And look at this. Duda is looking aside, which means that he's calculating this look, Gisa. This is the typical pose when... You are you are checking something that oh is my God, the it is it is mate, yeah? Rook g7, king g7, f6, king h6, knight g4 check. 
Queen F5. And the HD, that's what he rook looked F5. aside, yeah? So but King G6. King G6, rook E5 check. Yeah, just to highlight, this is checkmate like this. Mm -hmm. And King G6. Rook E5. Oh my and then God. Rook E7. And then and Knight, knight H6. H6. We might be seeing it. I think yeah, Buddha. Give, give me some love. Yeah, come on. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this is fantastic. I mean, okay, nice Rustam yeah. calls it out. Duda is also looking aside, definitely calculating all these brilliances. Wow. I also would like to use the momentum to, to mention that there is a special best game prize. Or, and look, G7 on the board. Rustam's checkmate, brilliancy on the board. Duda is crushing. Ah, oh, this is nice, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, I mean, I know chess players. Yeah, when it's someone uh, in a moment when you can play beautiful and then looks aside, it means that, yeah, he's just trying to make sure that, yeah, everything is fine. Be because when you focus on the screen, you can miss something. But when you look aside and then you are thinking in a distance a little bit, then you understand everything perfectly. It's also such a beautiful combination. It's a rook sacrifice and a queen sacrifice with a mate to follow and not immediately. Yeah, just and like... look at this. The Duda is... <laughs> Going up and down in his chair, he's enjoying the momentum. I mean, he knows he has calculated all the way, and Anish has to go for King H6. We have to see that beautiful mate. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it also might, you know, it might get into the best game collection of the of the event, and the the public will have the chance to vote or already can start voting on uh, on the official page of the tour. King H6 on the board, mm -hmm. Knight G4 check. Yeah, this is nice. Look at this. Duda is smiling. He just can't hide his, his joy, everything, of course. King G5, Queen F5, check. Yeah, King G4 runs into HD checkmate. What, what a beauty. Giving a checkmate with a pawn. Look at five. So King G6 is the only way. And even King G6 gets beautifully checkmated. So it's mm -hmm. not a spoiler if he if black goes King G6. Now he will probably go King G6. And then yeah, this rookie five, rookie seven. It's a, it's a remarkably nice variation. I'm so proud of this one. Yeah, beautiful. I mean, you you spot it instantly. And uh, okay, this one needed some calculation. Yeah, you you can't uh call it out mm -hmm. without calculating but uh, you you calculate it for 20 seconds or 15 seconds and you you have foreseen everything bravo it is also a very nice checkmate that we didn't show yet yeah if uh, after rook g7 king g7 f6 if black goes um king g8 could you go back there for a second yeah just uh, because okay then i will right? be blitzed out Come on, Anish, please don't resign. I understand it's... Uh... No, of course, Anish resigns. He knows exactly. So we, we're going to show one more time. King f7 runs into rook e7 check. King g8, knight h6 check. The bishop on b1 mm -hmm. is there. King h8, rook h7 checkmate. What a fantastic win by Duda. And uh, by this, he wins the match against Anish Giri and is in the lead with Magnus Carlsen with nine points. Sensational stuff. So, yeah, this is really nice. Yeah, I also let, really let me... like the other mate. Yeah, after yeah, here bishop h7, king h8, knight g6 check, and then queen h5 and knight e7. I think this is so elegant. Yeah, this is... well, it's from every angle. Yeah, <laughs> there is just no way, no, no way of uh, defending. Wow, beautiful. However, no time to... Yeah, of course, Wesley has won his game, so he also won the match. Uh, all eyes on Prague versus Liam, and it does seem like in this endgame it will be very difficult to jinx it, yeah? It, it seems like White will be just crushing. Mm -hmm. And then Prague wins 3-0, yeah? If he, if he does win this game, then he wins 3-0 against Liam. What a comeback. Yeah, we talked about Anish's comeback yesterday. Well, after that heartbreaking loss, this is the right, this is the right attitude. Wow. Well, maybe Just... you finally found the one unjinxable position. Exactly. I mean, okay. <laughs> and okay, Prague down to one minute four, but okay, those pawns are just marching. The, mm -hmm. the only problem would be Black could play a5 and King d6 together. Then 
things would be complicated, but it's just impossible. Now, king d6 runs into b takes a6, and bishop a6, c5 just wins the bishop. Mm -hmm. So even there, there is no intrigue. And of course, if black is forced to take a, b5, c, b5, then we know exactly that these two passers decide the game automatically. So Liam goes bishop c8. Yeah, he does not want to touch any of any of these pawns on the queen side. Yeah, white will probably just go c5 and. Uh... Yeah, white plays c5 and. And I mean, a, a takes b5 is then force. Bishop takes b5. And then king f1, king e2 also comes, collects the pawn. But mm -hmm. okay, white has the two passers. Bishop d3, also very nice. Not allowing any activization of, of black's bishop. Pawn on h7 is also attacked and preparing yeah, king f1, king e2. Just going king f1, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant performance by Prague today. King e6. Of course, yeah. Liam has to try to protect his pawn on e3 with king e5, king d4. Great try. You, you have to, yeah. It's never too late to design. Of course, if it's completely lost, it's completely lost. But if there are chances and DM is trying to find, Prague goes for another pawn grab with bishop h7. Yeah, because he can always go king f1, e1, right? He's always in time to control this, uh, this pass. E pawn, yes, exactly. And then this case, he's even in no pressure that suddenly black blocks the queen mm -hmm. side. What happens? Because... He also has extra pawn on the king side. Yeah, he should really have enough pawns by now. Yeah, king f1, king c5. Now bishop will probably retreat to d3. And then king d4, we just go bishop e2. Yeah, just... Uh... Mm -hmm. And then we have also b6 coming. Oh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, like after a5 now, black has a great positional compensation, but for a lot of pawns. Yeah. For too many, yeah. Give me one more pawn on b6. Yeah, it might be absolutely fine. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, just too many pawns. Yeah, a5 will be played. And now even, yeah, king e1, black will be in tsuk-tsuang. Okay, I mean, he has no pawns left. Yeah, he should be in all sorts of tsuk -tsuangs. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's too much. Two, two extra pawns, but because East is uh, isolated, it's a powerful pawn, but isolated. King is taking, uh, has it perfectly under control. It feels like white is three pawns up, yeah? But not so easy to create a pass pawn on the king side. Well, he can just bring his king around to c3 first, right? And... Okay, then we always gonna go king d4, but then well, already b6, b6 yeah. and you yeah, of course, yeah, that's it. Bishop f1 also possible, yeah, getting ready for king e2. Also, maybe systematically h3, g3, h4, yeah. Mm -hmm. Bishop e6. We we might be seeing h3, g3, just very systematic. Another pass pawn appears on the h file, and that's it. Yeah, on the board. Yeah, I mean, there are limits to how many pawns black can hold back, yes? <laughs> yeah. Wow, what a day. I mean, such a bloody day. So many decisive games and mm -hmm. almost no draws, yeah? Yeah, we had, we had everything. We had uh, some great games also, this unbelievably nice combination. And... Um, some some completely dominant performances, right? Prague three zero, Magnus three zero, and some yeah, great Duda beating Anish two and a half half, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, Wesley against Arjun, yeah, and, and that's what we talked about uh, in the break, yeah. That if Wesley starts to win, it's it's a bad news for for the concurrency, yeah, for for his opponents because I have tremendous faith in in Wesley, and that's it. Liam resigns, a new pass pawn appeared, 
And that's it for today. I mean, uh, the, the games, the matches have been settled. I'm believing that we will be hearing a Prague interview right now from Tanya. And the match results. Yeah, so Magnus Carlsen, Shakti Amamadjalov, 3-0. What a massacre we have seen there. Also Prague beating Liam Le, 3-0. What a comeback. Also, we're going to hear a Duda interview after this stunning checkmate, of course. I think Polish fans are going completely wild and crazy with this stunning mate. And Vesli saw bouncing back, winning two and a half half against Arjun Arigaishi. And uh, that's it. That's it. A stunning day of chess. And looking forward to the interviews. While yeah. we are waiting for the interview, Rustam, say something. Give your impression of, of today. No, I, then I couldn't be happier. Yeah, just so so much good chess, and we had really everything: good end games, uh, good positional play from Magnus, and uh, amazing combination sacrifices by by Duda early on. Yeah, it's just very very nice. Yeah, Duda seems to be in in fantastic form. I mean, uh, the the first two matches were impressive. Today was all the more impressive. I mean, beating Ganesh Giri, who so far in the tournament also showed some tremendous fighting spirit and so on. Yeah, Amazing no, the, stuff. The, yeah, the only the only negative thing to report is that Arjun is still not not getting the job done. Yeah. I mean we need we need him to win something. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean I hope that uh, he somehow forgives himself for the second game. Yeah, because sometimes it's the most difficult moment to to let it go. Yeah. That because I know it for myself. It was always my big problem. Yeah. That all these missed chances are in your head. You can't sleep. You know, you are twisting and turning a thousand times in bed. Yeah, and it becomes seven o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock, nine o'clock. And then you are getting more and more frustrated that, oh my God, I'm not even sleeping. What is going on? So yes. I, I I hope that he will manage to calm down and, uh, and see the positive that he's here and he still has four more big matches. Yeah, yeah, no, he's a he's a very stable guy. Yeah, I think I think he'll be fine. Yeah, um, and uh, you know, even uh, also they play so many tournaments these days. Uh, uh, one bad tournament does not really uh, does not really change very much in this respect, right? Uh, yeah, the the only only sad part for me because of course everybody can have a bad tournament, yeah. But in this field, he will anyway learn a lot. However, usually you learn the most if you perform the best, and it might not be enough, yeah. But so far we haven't seen, definitely haven't seen the best, even not nearly from from Arjun. So mm -hmm. I hope that he can step up his level, fine to his usual rhythm, which will be very tough with this one thirty schedule. Of course, we we fully understand. But we wish for him the best, and we will really wish that he will be able to succeed with that. Interview, apparently. All right. Hello, I'm very happy, of course. It's not every day you um, get to checkmate your opponent. I mean, not really checkmate, and that's, um, in, in a way, I'm kind of disappointed that uh, he didn't, you know, that there was no checkmate on the board, but the combination was so beautiful. Um, and so like you know a typical and um, but also like with uh, with checks something extraordinary to me and i have always um, you know like could appreciate uh, beauty in chess and um, it's very uh, you know it's very nice to be on the good side of things Absolutely. And David calls it a contender for game of the season, calculating mate in eight, I guess. This must mean you are in just perfect form. You're on fire. Um, yeah, you know, it's uh, basically a long variation with uh, with checks. I mean, all, all checks along the way. So, um, yeah, actually, I did see it uh, like... Um, very very quickly but had to you know calculate it like 1000 times you know to make sure that i it's really checkmate and i don't blunder anything because uh, i mean otherwise it would be disaster but luckily um yeah it was working and um it's very very nice you know um to be smiling i mean me smiling against anish not not reverse as it used to be so um very nice <laughs> 
definitely. Would you call this one of the best games of your career? Uh, the combination, yes. The game, not really. Uh, I, I mean, I once again got into this variation. I I had the game against Yuangi like a couple of years back uh, in this Ragozin, and I uh, actually had I think the very same position um, till some moment, and I. I mean, I drew that game, but, you know, couldn't remember anything apart of the fact that, uh, I mean, apart of the result. And it was very annoying because uh, basically I, I didn't know if it was working for me or not and or how great it was. So, um, but on the other hand, you know, white, white's play is very straightforward and it's always uh, easier to be on the attacking side. And also the compensation was long term, I would say, with such a... Nice uh, center of pawns and knight on e5. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, right now I can say, you know, that going again into this variation was very, very smart. But actually, it was a coincidence. <laughs> it looked beautiful. And uh, you are now, uh, like yesterday, in shared lead with Magnus Carlsen in the Tour Finals. You already won one major this season, Oslo Esports Cup. But in that one, you kind of came towards the end of the tournament. Now you're on top here from the very get-go. How do you see your chances to win the whole thing? I'm very optimistic, of course, but... Um... Still, you know, uh, more than a half uh, of tournament uh, has to be played. And uh, also, uh, I think I get like the most difficult opponents in the end. I mean, Magnus is, of course, always uh, the toughest opponent. And against Wesley So, uh, which I'm playing next to the Ross round, is, um, I haven't won a match against him yet. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, it will be definitely challenging and it's, I think it's too early, you know, to um, consider about, you know, uh, winning the tournament or not. I'm just focused to play good chess and, um, yeah, and be, you know, as precise as, uh, as I can get. Sounds like a great plan. Uh, young so enjoy that beautiful finish uh, you had to the day and uh, best of luck tomorrow as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, wow, well, we have heard a very happy Jan Shistov Duda there. I can imagine that uh, playing Rook G7 check and then checkmating your opponent with this four sequence with Queen Sacrifice, everything should be should be brilliant. But we also have another interview. The first one was a pity for sure. I got kind of ambitious at some point. Um, I felt like he misplayed it a little bit. I could win a pawn. But as soon as I won the pawn, I realized that I'm stuck and I no longer saw how to um, how to pull the emergency brake properly. And I got uh, worse there. It was kind of strange because like I saw multiple ways where I could play safe. But I thought like winning a pawn should be good. And then uh, when he plays knight on before, I realized my knights are kind of stuck. And uh, yeah, it kind of went very quickly from me thinking I'm better to me thinking I'm worse. And I didn't really notice like... Um, where exactly that moment uh, happened and uh, in the second game i got some chances maybe i was a little slow and uh, in the end that told so i wasn't able to push and the last game i don't know like i think this i was not really uh, remembering my stuff very well but if i compare these variations to what i know i think i should have a decent uh, version of these complications but uh, somehow it, uh, yeah, it was very difficult to play. My king is very weak and he's got a uh, few pawns for a piece. And the way I played it, he's got this pawn block, it's over. I should have um, at least uh, given back the exchange and then I don't like my position at all, but uh, I should have done it because actually what I went for is very bad and I kind of realize it's bad, but I, you know, there's always the materialistic side in me hoping that maybe you know, something will happen. But I just had to trust the, the gut. All right, but despite having this very difficult, uh, these difficult games, we saw in game three, there was this beautiful finish that happened after F6 and both you and Jan Tristov Duda had a smile on your face. It felt like you were also admiring the beauty despite it being difficult for you. Yeah, at that point I saw multiple wins for him, but I didn't see this uh, first one. It was very pretty. I think it's, uh, it's a very pretty variation somehow. The way, I don't know, the way the rook goes to E4, E7, um, I think it's very unusual and it's, 
kudos to him for finding it. I mean, I thought, for example, just take on C8 and F6, something like that was uh, completely winning. But uh, yeah, I appreciate that his efforts of trying to find a beautiful checkmate. And was that the reason that you let it play out on the board? I didn't fully let it play out on the board. I don't really like that. Um, but OK, I think rookie 5 is a move that some people would struggle with if they're um, very new at chess. But after that, I think Akad Matar will show them how it's done. And uh, tomorrow you're playing against Magnus. Uh, your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's going to be very, very tough. Um, but I will definitely try my hardest uh, to give a good, good fight. Because usually with Magnus, either you get crushed or it gets close. And uh, yeah, let's hope tomorrow will be one of the matches when it gets close. We look forward to it. All the best. Get some rest. Thank you. Wow, we have heard it also from Anish. Yeah, he was in the deceiving end of uh, of this beauty, beautiful combination from Duda. Duda showing a little bit of disappointment that Anish did not let him deliver the checkmate. Let's just go through one more time because this was so beautiful. Rook C7 to G7. It did not come as a shock to us because Rustam has already called it out. As Duda mentioned in the interview, he has already foreseen it as well. But over the board, you have to make it, uh, you know, you have to, you can't just play for the guys. You have to make it sure that it definitely works as you wish. And we have seen this beautiful finish with queen f5 check. Takes, takes, king g6, king take g4, runs into hd checkmate. I think it's, you, you just can't see it enough. It's so beautiful. The look is protected by the bishop. King has nowhere to go. Black's own pawns are blocking the way. So there was no other way than to go back to g6 and after the move, look, f5 to e5, opening up the check on the diagonal with the bishop. It was the moment when Anish saw like, okay, that's it, it's enough because it's already clear that king f7, rook e7 check, king g8, knight h6 check, king h8, rook h7 is checkmate. And we have Prague with us. Yeah, I'm happy with the way today went. Hold on. That also against somebody like Liam, who's such a difficult player to beat. What clicked today for you? I don't know. The first game... Uh, what happened in the first game? No, second game I can remember. Ah, yeah. The first game I got this uh, very nice knight g5, knight h5 and quickly it went my way. And second game... I think he made this um, emotional decision with f4 because of the match situation. Because otherwise, I don't think... Uh, Liam would play that uh, in probably 100 games, he would never play f4. So I think it was just an emotional decision. After that, I got a very good position. But then um, I was not playing well. Then I had a lot of chances. But okay, in the end, okay, with little time, um, his king was weak and, wow, and I won. And this game, okay, I needed a draw. So I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to think about that, but uh, it, comes to your mind so nothing can be done and I played this 94 decision which I'm not very happy about it was trying to make a draw which I shouldn't be trying uh, I mean I don't mean that way like I shouldn't be just ruthlessly going for a draw but then okay things somehow turned out for me with after he played e4 I think my position was very very comfortable there do you think after the experience of yesterday being two game points up it helped you today to keep things under control in the third game <laughs> It definitely helps the experience, but I don't. I didn't. I don't want the experience. I wanted to win yesterday. Uh, but yeah, overall, I think, as I said, this this whole tournament is a uh, very good experience. You know, to learn how to play this match situation, how to how not to play in a situation where you just need a draw. So this kind of situation is a very good experience for me. And Prague, you're up against Wesley tomorrow. Your thoughts on that matchup? Yeah, it'll be interesting, and it'll be. Uh, a tough match as well, so yeah, we'll see. I'm um, just hoping play some good chess there. Okay, awesome. Talking about good chess, we've got a puzzle for you, so don't go anywhere and all the best for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Bye. Yeah, big congratulation to Prague. What a day, sensational day, winning 3 0 against Liam Blair. I mean, a stunning player, very solid player, very successful in the whole Matt Water Champions chess tour. And after knowing what happened yesterday, I think this is the... Everybody wished for a part of Liam and, and his fans that uh, Prague will bounce back and he did it in style. Rustam, what, what are your thoughts on, on the interviews, the, the, the reaction of the players? 
Well, basically, I think they said it all, yeah? I mean, we cannot really add very much to this because I think all of them are very detailed and even Anish, who lost today, um, seemed, you know, to give his frank uh, take on, on the match and on some of the positions. I think there is very little we can add there. It was a beautiful day of chess, with the small exception of Arjun's performance, who I, I have personal reasons to wish for more because he's one of my students. And uh, But besides that beautiful day of chess and I want to see some more tomorrow. Yeah, that's uh, that's guaranteed. I mean, we already got to know that uh, Anish Giri faces Magnus Carlsen. Always a very interesting battle. Magnus did have a short day. On the other hand, Anish also can't complain. If you already lose, then probably it's, it's better to, to get over with as quickly as possible, which also happens. So yes, time now to 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 calm down and, and get ready for, for that match. And Prague versus Wesley so also will be super interesting because Prague bounced back. At the same time, Wesley has also uh, won his first match and won two games, two, two consecutive games. And uh, what else do we have? Let me check. Can, can you read the screen, Rustam? Because I have trouble reading it. No, no, I'm only seeing you. Uh, only seeing you. Okay, see I will just... Oh, no, here, yeah, here I have it. Uh-huh. Yeah, I also see it now already. So, uh -huh. Liam Le versus Jan Shishtov Duda. Uh, Shakri Amamegyalov against Arjun Arigaishi. And of course, already we have called it uh, Pragnanda against Wesley So. And Anish Giri against Magnus Carlsen. All kinds of uh, dramatic events possible. For example, this Mamegyalov Arjun Arigaishi. I mean, usually Shakri is very aggressive. It might help Arjun to, you know, settle into, into the right mindset. Yeah, he knows what to expect. And uh, maybe with Shakri, I will be over aggressive, yeah, which Arjun could use it to his advantage. Yeah, I think maybe tomorrow is the day that Arjun starts winning matches, yes. Yeah, could, could easily be. Liam is uh, looking forward to bouncing back against Jan Shishtov Duda, who so far showed stellar performance with this incredible checkmate. And we see the standings, yeah, Magnus Carlsen and Jan Shishtov Duda with nine points each. They are clear leaders. And, uh, well, uh, the, the rest of the West, he also has won. Yeah, it's very important. Arjun, as uh, Rustam has mentioned, yeah, still needs to... I mean, I think you get the first point and then things are so much easier. Yeah, that's that's kind of the, the first step forward. Mm -hmm. Now, that's true. Yeah, you just, you, you need to get on that on the score table. Yeah, that's vital. Yeah, it's it's super important. Yeah, now we, we also see that uh, two players who were with four points, Anish Giri, and also Liam Le has lost their games. I mean, they lost their matches. So they remain with four points. Prague at the same time. Yesterday, he got one point for losing in the Blitz playoff. Now today, one has uh, also four points. There, there is all kinds of dynamic. Shakri are started very well. Yeah, he won this uh, first match against Prague. And then... Now he lost two consecutive matches. There is so much up and down for all the players, but so far it's it's a two-man show between Jan Shishtov Duda and Magnus Carlsen, and we can't wait to see the follow-up. Today we also had an earlier, faster day. Yeah, Basically everything finished quite quickly, and uh, it might also give us the chance to, to recharge the batteries. Yeah. Rustam, any final thoughts? I just, yeah, as I said, a beautiful day of chess. Thank you very much also for our viewers for being there. And I hope to see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, stay with us. And I also have a request. Yeah, guys, if you really like uh, what we are doing, you, you like the show, please press the like button in our YouTube video. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Leave your comments. Uh, we are here for you. Yeah, we are commenting for you guys. Also, at the same time, Thanks to incredible partner with uh, co-commentator, co-host uh, Rustam Kasimjanov. We are enjoying every single minute, every single second of this event. Uh, please like our video and be back tomorrow, same time, same place. We try 8.45 Central European. We never manage, but uh, we, we, we are getting closer to it. Yeah, so good night, good morning, good day, wherever you are, and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Air quality isn't the first thing that comes to mind when you think about chess and esports, but it affects our focus, decision making, health, sleep, and more. What's in the air you breathe? Find out with Air Things. My name is Rafael Diaz, and I have been passionate about chess since I was 14 years old. Chess taught me a lot of things when I was a teenager, like how to think strategically and how to make decisions based on logical reasoning. It also taught me to find the determination to pursue my goals, which later on helped me to obtain a PhD in physics. Chess has helped me so much that I always wanted to find a way to make more people interested and attracted to this wonderful game. My other passion, video games, led me to create my own game studio minimal games. We are now a team of eight people and we have been working for the past two years in our most ambitious project to date, Chessarama. Chessarama is a collection of chess inspired games, each with a different set of rules and themes like medieval fantasy, farming, samurai and even soccer. Our objective is to give players a modern gameplay experience using inspirations from chess tactics, strategies and culture to create original puzzle and turn-based games all in one package. The reason why I'm here today is to announce our partnership with Play Magnus Group founded by the five times world chess champion Magnus Carlsen and creator of the Champions Chess Tour, the world's most innovative sport event to emerge in the last few years. As part of this partnership, Chessarama will become an official sponsor of the Champions Chess Tour for the remainder of 2022 and for the whole season of 2023. We will also be an official partner of the next FIDE World Championships broadcast on Chess24 channels. It is a big honor to have Play Magnus Group supporting Chessarama's mission of bringing even more people to the magical world of chess. I invite you to join us in this adventure by adding Chessarama on your Steam wishlist and by following along both the game and Play Magnus on social media.